I didn't want to be alive, basically. There was a couple of twice where I told my father, well, once my father and once my parents that I wanted to be dead. I don't want to be alive because I just, I don't know, like I was lucky I was around good lads when I was in that scene because they looked out for me. But And we all looked out for each other, but fuck me, like it was misery, pure misery. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any fulfillment. I didn't know what any of that was. Kieran Highland, thank you for joining me on the Auxoro podcast. Hey, no bother. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm Looking excited. So, so yeah. when you when you first reached out to me on Instagram, I saw your paintings and I I immediately knew that I wanted to have you on the podcast to talk oh, about yeah. it. You have you have wild colors, layers, and I wanted to ask you how did you get into painting and how did you develop your style as an abstract expressionist. Jesus Christ. Let's hop right into it. That's, that's some question. Oh, well, can I first say, um, before we shite on about art and all that, uh, the only reason I reached out to you was because um, I, I know that Mark, because you, you had Mark Norman on there recently, and he's one of my favorite comedians. Mm. And, and I know he was like, a blast. He, yeah, he was an ab- absolute. Pick. Just I, I, I believe I told you over messaging, but he's so quick. He has obviously the comedian's timing. Everything you say, it he has an answer for it. So it, it was definitely yeah. a good test to to be in the room with Mark Norman, who's a comic, uh, doing it every night. Yeah, he's unbelievable, and just and I knew that he's always doing podcasts. Like he's the, the man is just every day he's doing them. So I just. I'm always like refreshing his kind of content to see when he's doing new ones. But like a lot of them can be the same, especially if the podcast host doesn't do any, doesn't really bother just asking the same old shit. Like, you know, so like uh, your, yours was yours clicked because you asked him questions that he, he definitely never got. Um, mm-hmm. And yours was really good. That's why I messaged you. I don't know. I wouldn't normally message everybody that gets him on obviously it was just because yours was really good and he was really enjoying it and you can tell when he's when he's enjoying it yeah. he's he's like he's he's clicking with you that's all all that is gold so that's why i messaged it because i lo- i just loved that episode and i could tell you did a lot of work to get him on and and especially where you were as well in that studio it looked like a serious setup that you had going there um yeah i i appreciate yeah. that i actually so when we were just uh, as a side note, when I was in the first 10, 15 minutes of the conversation with Mark Norman, I'm a comedy nerd. I've never done stand up comedy, but I watch stand up almost every day while I eat lunch, 10, 15 minutes. I was just watching a set before we got on, just as I was eating before I set up the podcast. And I'm yeah. super interested. I'm super interested in the behind the scenes of comedy and the thinking that goes into it. And he said 10 minutes in, as I'm grilling him with mindset questions and the nitty gritty of comedy, he just goes, I, th- I feel like we're boring the audience. <laughs> and, yeah, for, yeah, and, for yeah. me, and for me, I was like, shit, do I keep going? But I just kept, yeah. I kept going with it and trusted it because, mm-hmm. you know, even if it did bore the audience, it's something that I'm genuinely interested in. And I, ah, I think yeah, it yeah. Show- I think it ended up being a great podcast. So, so it's cool that you, you saw that. Well, it won't bore it won't bore your audience if your audience are there for you as well as him. Then it doesn't it doesn't bore anyone. That's what we're all there to listen to and see. So yeah, yeah I don't know. It came across as well, so I really enjoyed that because uh, like you can tell I've seen a lot of ones where he's on it and you're like, why did you do that? Or you know the other the podcast folks are just like asking him the yeah. usual shit about his, his growing up and it's like, come on, like the man's been on every podcast. You have to do a bit of work, like <laughs> mm. uh, stuff. So, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. that was the w- one of the first comments underneath my podcast was Mark. You know, you don't have to do every show, <laughs> and that made me laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. Funny. After look, fair play to him. He's he'll, he'll he always says yes, yeah. like you know. So fair, you have to respect yeah. him for that. You know, he 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 never gets too big. So yeah, yeah. So so speaking of building an audience, you know, you you've built a a big audience on on social media in a limited amount of time. And so I mm-hmm. wanted to get back to the to the painting and and ask you before we dive into social media and things like that. Oh, yeah. How did you yeah. how did you first get into painting and and how did you develop your your abstract expressionist style? Oh, Jesus. 
Well, I don't know, like this, the painting was a really, it was definitely something that was coming, Zach, like it was, it was definitely there uh, somewhere in me. Um, I didn't, I didn't start painting, well, if anybody can, that follows me can tell, I didn't start. <laughs> I'm not at it long because the, the painting was all childish, I can, but uh, yeah, just, I don't know, it just, it built slowly from the start of the the lockdown, the COVID, the first COVID lockdown yeah. in, in 2020 and in, in over here it was kind of March when that kicked in properly. And uh, I, I just had, I was doing loads of stuff at the time, like re- mm. keeping really busy. I was actually dipping into comedy as well. I was, I was getting up on stage there a good bit and doing like learning instruments and doing all a lot of creative stuff that I never did ever in my life. Uh, so I just, so you were you were actually doing uh, you were doing stand up comedy also at the start of the pandemic, or was that something you've done for a while? I was about a year trying it. Yeah, I was about. Mm. Uh, I I started in this. When did I take first on my first one? I think it was around uh, November of eighteen. I think was the first one, mm. and then I got a, I got a good fright that absolutely frightened the life out of me. So I didn't do another one until the summer of nineteen. <laughs> oh, uh. But uh, it was. Uh, but then I got I I did probably about ten or twelve of them. I think open mics. It's hard to get it's hard to get stage time in Ireland. You have to do a lot of kind of traveling and planning. But um, but I was doing it and I was doing music and instruments and it's kind of getting all that crack going and then uh, yeah. of course pandemic hit, pandemic hit then uh, all of the kind of things I was doing sports and all the creative stuff inside fell off and then I was just like right I, there has to be something here I can do that's not just sitting at home playing guitar or whatever uh, so yeah. I just I just I just start drawing I, I had loads of stuff built up in in travel journals, like when I went traveling there for a while, I, I had loads of stuff written down that I wanted to do that I never started. So the pandemic was like, right, get the travel journals and start taking off the list. Let's go. So, so yeah. art was one of them. Art was one of them. It wasn't a particular type of art. It was just art, paint or draw or whatever. And uh, and that was it. Yeah, I just started crayons with wax crayons as well as that. Like, you know, it wasn't even painting in the start. <laughs> in the start, it was crayons. I, I have all the crayon drawings here. Like it's, it's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, so it was crayons. So you, so you for, started. So you, I was gonna say you. So you started out of boredom and free time. It sounds like you. You were looking for a creative outlet to to do yeah. something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And like, even I would have got there eventually, but it probably would have been twenty or thirty years down the line because the stage and stand up and all that crack was was uh, just that just had my interest at the, at the time but then this just took over and then it just it just snowballed I went from crayons to markers and colouring pencils and uh, highlighter pens <laughs> all this stuff basically everything you can think of that you can draw with I yeah. use and then paint was the last thing and sure I didn't start painting until July of that of that year so like you're looking at what's that four months of just just getting marks down you know and then and then yeah people were just telling me why don't you try painting why don't you paint and i was like all right these are saying to paint so all right and then it just they got out of control and after that and uh and that's it that brought me up to now and it's just that's it now i don't know what to tell you what, <laughs> what, what were you it's, yeah what, what were you doing uh that? for work before you started before the pandemic what, what were you doing uh as a job well, they, uh, Day jobs, hard to, hard to describe. Well, it's not hard. It's just how a stripper, it? male like, stripper. Kinda, yeah, yeah. No, I'm that. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> always when uh, people are when people are like, oh, it's hard to explain. It's it's always like uh, something uh, either you don't want to say, like a stripper, yeah. or something just so weird or abstract that there's no yeah. proper job title for it. Yeah, ah, there's a job title. It's kind of like um, it's just because it's a go- it's involved with the government. Uh, or mm. a government contract so it's, it's kind of I don't, I'm not really too sure how much I, I'm supposed to say but it's just basically like I work with a lot of say um, Department of what we call it Land and Agricultural Agencies mm. providing maps and, and mapping information you know like digital maps and satellite information and all that kind of all that all of basically like you know making all that uh, visual art um, data available to all those kind of to places so that kind of thing, like, you know, so it's, it's it. like, I love my day job as well, I tell you, it's not, and there's an art to it too, but, um, so the, what you're saying is the department, the department of, uh, 
Homeland Security of Ireland is listening to this conversation. <laughs> yeah. So be careful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, 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 so government, so Everything government exactly. contracting, government contracting, you were doing that for a while up until the pandemic and then you got laid off or, oh, or what oh, happened? No, no, still, I'm, I'm still doing it. Still, still doing it. it. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Like it, if anything, like, like the job I do is, well, it's very, I don't know, like it's not easy, but you can, like they don't have to really, um, how would you describe it? Like you, you can keep your head down and do your work all day long and not get an email or phone call. That's the side of my mm. job, you know. You can just put put the work in and get it done, close your laptop and get out of there. And it's great for somebody like me because you can go in and just punch in your hours, whatever hours you need to do or want to do, and then just free up the whole evening and there's nobody emailing you or phone calling you. It's unreal. Like it's my whole headspace is is like gone from that, you know, at a particular time in the day. And then it, it switches into evening mode or artist Kieran or whatever, whatever I'm doing. Like it's, it's great for that, for anybody that's, for anyone that's has something going on in the evening or a side thing, it's a, it's a brilliant job for that. So I'm really, oh, yeah. really lucky. That's yeah. how I feel. That's how I feel with the job I have right now. I've been working in marketing for about four, four and a half years now. And when mm-hmm. everything went, re- when everything went remote during the pandemic, like it did for, millions of other people my job became much more task-based because i wasn't clocking into the office i used to have to be there every day from nine to five and then it just became okay just work from home and do what you need to get done and so that allows me to work on whatever i need to work on and that may take me two hours some days it may take me six hours some days but i can compartmentalize my day job now much better which allows yeah. me to also do podcasting on the side and, and pr- prepare better for podcasts and, and do more podcasts so in, in that way we have a lot more um uh, in common you know i don't have a security clearance but i, I do have a, a job yeah. where i can uh I, it affords me time to work on a creative yeah. pursuit and it's an amazing it took it took a it took a crisis for that for all that kind of click we did in Ireland anyway but like there was never a work from home option where I was yeah you know and now now we people creatives get to have a day job where they can put a bit by there to pay your bills and pay for your food or whatever and also free up time in the evening to just hit the ground running with whatever you want to do be it uh, a podcast or learn an instrument or learn a language or you know do whatever because the time taken to travel and all that's gone now that's all the thing in the past and all that time now is pumped into things you want to do and then slowly that mm-hmm. will chip into the work time you know and then you have to take time off work and because that's what's happened to me <laughs> so it's great it's like yeah it's amazing yeah. Now we continue. Not, 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 like i'm not praying for the fucking covid to last forever but i'm delighted that i am no like, i'm just kidding <laughs> yeah yeah like I was, yeah. I was delighted. That, like honest to God, when COVID hit, I couldn't. Like I was, I yeah. was so bur- burned out. Like I didn't have any. Now a lot of it was self inflicted. Like I could have said no to a lot of the shit I was doing, but like a lot of it, you kind of don't know how to say no. And a lot, I was a lot of people were relying on me, and I was just like, I was running on empty there for about two months of the. Well, the, that new year, I was in a bad way, and when COVID hit, I was like, thank fuck. I hope nobody I know was. Normally I know dies, and then after that I said I don't care because I fucking I needed this. And you know what? So many people admitted that to me as well that they were fucking delighted that this happened. Yeah. But like you know, there the yeah, people no, out there. The one, the one positive about COVID is the the world stopped, but in in it also stopped for everyone else. So yeah. if you weren't, if you got laid off, or if you weren't feeling well, or if you've we're feeling stuck in a rut financially, creatively, professionally, you know, yeah. I, I was lucky that I continued my job remotely, but there are a lot of people who just, you know, they got laid off and that was it. And they were stuck in one place. And usually when you get stuck, the rest of the world just keeps going. But this was a global stuckness where yeah. it didn't feel, it, it didn't feel as bad to take a breather because everyone else was also forced to do it by the mm. pandemic. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. It was crazy to see, and it's even to this day. Like, but like, like that, the amount of creatives that flourished, and a lot of them were, would have been like introvert types as well, you know. And you can see them now. They they would have 
a lot of people that wouldn't wouldn't like to be dealing with people or whatever are all of a sudden changing everything to online and they're flying because they can just yeah. stay at home and do their online online crap or whatever. So it's oh, it's unreal, unreal to see it. No, what what is it. so many people. I feel like before we move on, we have to define the word crack because I'm not entirely sure oh, yeah. what it means. And I know that you say it, I've read that I've read that you say it a lot in posts. I've heard you say it on Instagram Reels. What does crack mean for the uneducated uh, American who's not familiar with with Irish slang? Uh, what does crack mean? It basically just means like the kind of the life in something or the energy or in something. It's a go- it's a good thing. Like you would say, like I would say to my friends, "What's the crack?" Meaning, have you anything going on or? what's the story or what was the crack like last night? Whereas, you know, what, mm. what was happening wherever you were or, you know, what's the crack like anywhere? You know, it's, it's kind of, a, it's a hard thing to define for somebody that's not Irish, but it basically just means like, what, what, what's the story? What's, but if it's good crack, you want to be there. If, if someone is telling you that somewhere is good crack or a person could be good crack or, you know, okay. anything, you know, so it's a good, it's a good positive thing. And if, if, if you get described, that, uh, yeah, he has a good bit of crack about him. That's good. You're you're, you're going down yeah, well, we, so. we also we we also have good crack in America, and it and it brings oh, life yeah. to you. But you smoke it instead of say it. it it's a different yeah. type of uh, a different type of uh, administration process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the crack, the crack we have in Ireland now doesn't take down fucking doesn't take down a society of people or anything like that. Yeah, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't the crack you have in Ireland, <laughs> crack you have in Ireland doesn't uh, destroy a family of five. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Well, you could, it could, <laughs> it probably, if the father's having too much crack in a pub, then it could, if you know what I mean. There, but, you, know, there you go. The, that's a different thing, yeah. Yep. Um, is the, key, the, key the key is just not letting, the key is just not letting the crack get in the way. That's really the yeah, really a, a good good approach for life. And uh, another another saying as well, another good one that's kind of used around rural is have your crack and get out of there. That's a that's another mm. good kind of saying, especially when you get to my age, like thirty two. Like I've I've missed it there, and I don't want to really be in the pubs or the nightclubs for too long. You can go on in and yeah. have a bit of crack, but, but get out of there. <laughs> don't yeah. be hanging around. So yeah, that's yeah. what we say down here. Anyway. <laughs> so if you, if I, if I said that's good crack, that's like saying that, that's good fun, or that's yeah. it brings life to you, like you said, it's it's something oh, yeah. excite, it's something exciting, worthwhile. Yeah, I tell you, I tell you what looks like good crack that I'd, I'd love to give a give a go. Burning Man, I'd love to go and see what that's all about. Uh, I ah. know a few people that went there, yeah, and that looks like wild, wild crack. So I don't mind that dipping into that now. From there. I haven't been. I haven't been, but I would like to go. Do Do you guys have an Irish version of Burning Man? Is there some festival like that in <laughs> yeah. Ireland? Yeah. What yeah, is it's it? Called the Electric Picnic. The Electric Picnic. Oh my! The God, Electric it's, it's Picnic. Outrageous. Yeah, yeah. That was it's our age. I did. I did uh, three years in a row. I did two full ones, which is a three day. It's a three. Day, it's it's only on my doorstep here in County Leash as well in the Midlands. It's about ten mm. minutes from me, which. Is, handy when you want to get out there uh but i did a couple in a row and oh my god like you're looking at a week a whole week if not two weeks of recovery depending on what the crack is like and how oh. hard you go it's it is insane like and it's it's always that like the last weekend of august or the first weekend of september which is a lovely time of year in ireland like weather wise mm. it's 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 not too cold it's about if you're lucky i was lucky one year i got about 20 degrees celsius for the whole weekend and like shorts and t-shirts all weekend like drugs drink the whole of shebang absolutely unreal like music all day all night it doesn't stop it doesn't sleep like oh, the tents yeah. are there everybody's everybody's camping but like there's not much sleeping going on it's just and it was closed obviously it didn't happen the last um the last two years so it took a break mm. and now this year i think there were seventy five thousand tickets and it was sold out in half an hour like the whole yeah dude, I, on. I bet i bet i mean yeah, yeah. coachella's back this year in america Lollapalooza is back burning yeah. man is back so so i'm excited i'm excited to go back to music festivals and the, the last one i went to was Lollapalooza this summer of 2017 in chicago 
and oh, and I was the, I was the same way. We went hard for three days, you know, tripping balls on Molly, drinking, just having a good time, staying up three nights in a row. And it took me a good week to feel like I was a yeah. human being again. I knew going into yeah. it that it was going to take a lot out of me, but but that's just that's just the trade off. When you're asking your body to run on 300% for three days in a row, then you're going to be running on 50% for a while until you can charge back up. Yeah. What's the saying for every high, there's a, there's an equal and, or mm. double low or what, what's that? Something like that anyway, but it's true. It's yeah. so true. And the low, the lows for me are way, way worse than, you know, double. Oh, cheers. Yeah. So, yeah, not anymore, thank God. But ah, uh, yeah, like it, like it can still go and 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 not partake in, you know, chemicals or or drink. I'll have an amazing time, you know. It's yeah. That, uh, you know, I I hadn't been to a festival, uh, say sober, really ever. So like the next one I go to will be sober, and it'll be a challenge. Like I'm, yeah. I'm kind of dreading it, but, but I mean, I'm I'm like nervous but excited for it as well, just to see what happens. So yeah, it'll it'll be it'll be it, it, it's tough, you know. I I admire the people who go to festivals sober, who go out sober, and are still fun because yeah. it's so it's so hard not to partake, or it's so hard to be. You know, I've done it before because I played baseball in college, so I would have nights where I would go out, but I'd tell myself I'm not going to drink tonight, or I'll have one beer because I'm I have to play tomorrow. And mm. I, I wasn't fun. I was just being upset, wishing, you know, I could get fucked up like everyone else. And it's I, I was yeah. being a drag. And we had a guy on our team who was sober all four years, just chose never chose not to drink. I believe he had alcoholism mm. in his family, so he never he never brushed uh, close with it. And he was a amazing time every time we went out you would think he was drinking but he was always sober and and i always respect guys who can be sober but also not let that take away from the night yeah fair play to him but do you think though because that's the way you were like back then where you're young and in college and especially playing college ball you're all in on college ball like it's all it's mm. it takes over your life so like when you're out yeah, you're not drinking, but you're thinking, all you're thinking about is the game or the sport. Like nowadays, oh, yeah. when you're out, nowadays when you're out, you're mm. out with your friends and you are you go to a place because you choose to go there. And you, if you're not drinking or whatever, you're like, well, Grant, I came here to be with my friends and to be at this place. So let's have the crack. But like back then, like, it's like, fuck this. Like I, I all I want to do is like play a ball and I yeah. shouldn't be here. And blah, blah, blah. Maybe that's, maybe there's something in that way. That's why we don't really maybe be ourselves or try and have fun when we're in that situation because like you're in the, you're playing ball and you're thinking about different things but like I mean, that's just like for me personally like I just think like now if I'm out somewhere sober like it doesn't, it doesn't bother me because I, I choose to go to uh, maybe a pub or somewhere else to be with my friends or to play music but like the drink mm -hmm. isn't that's not bringing me there you know or the drugs or anything like that not anymore you know so yeah yeah I don't Can know I, I, yeah yeah, I, w I wanted to take a step back and, and go back to the, the painting for a moment. Before you started drawing, b before the drawing led to the painting, were you creative as a teenager? Was that a, a passion of yours that you kind of put to the side until this past couple of years? Did, were you, you never had drawn anything before and then you started drawing? How, how did that come about? What made you choose to get into to drawing because you, you had tried a few things you said you had tried stand-up you had tried music but it seems like yeah. the, the art the painting and drawing is sticking yeah I, I definitely was but i didn't uh i didn't give it a go you know i never really tried i never went out to a shop and bought any art materials or anything like that like i did it in school um high school say you know did did like high school level um did it for an exam leaving her but it was shit I hate it. like my teacher was an idiot and like he had his own crack going on in his first life that I found out after after school which of course how how is somebody you know if they if they have if you have something going on in your personal life everything else crumbles you know so that's that was what was going on with him so like I hated art because of him and uh even though I lo like I loved it at the time going into that school but it that just turned me sour I and I never 
ever. I thought I must have been sixteen then. So mm-hmm. after that, I was like, "Not never ever. Don't, I'm done with art now." Uh, so in terms of like doodling and doing what what man now, it, it, it never it was never like this. Like I would do usual stuff. Sure, everybody drew the uh, cartoons or the pencil cases and things like that. You know, everybody did that. You know, that was just a school of shit, and nobody liked it. So that's what mm-hmm. I did. You know, but. Like in terms of like creativity and expressing myself, not not really at all. Like I had, I had like DJ decks, you know, like um, like record decks, like old school mm. that you can scratch vinyl on. I had them when I was fifteen, and I loved them. They were brilliant, and I still have the same ones today. But I, like I don't use them. But that was probably the first thing that I ever did, that was, I suppose, expression or create like personal expression. So after the, that, the no, DJing you the, the DJing you said DJ decks, yeah, 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 and it was like I loved it because it was mine. Like nobody else. There was me and another guy uh, from my class in school, and like we it was just the two of us. Nobody else, nobody else was doing it. It was really like obscure at the time. Like you're thinking, two thousand and one, two thousand and two, mm. in Ireland, in the Midlands of Ireland. Yeah. But like there's nobody doing this, so it was brilliant. Barred, barred a few DJs up in Dublin, obviously, because that was the city. But yeah. we were there in rural, rural Ireland, going to each other's houses and just scratching and mixing, and it was just chaos. And like we were, I I lived in a council estate, which would be like you know similar to a project style setup, uh, like you know all houses uh, crammed in together. And the guy had these huge speakers and they would blow the house apart. Like, and like, you know, it was the neighbors were, were giving out shit. Like, but sure, that was just my thing. Like, you know, it was brilliant. So that's what they did. Yeah, that was the first thing. But like, yeah, n- never, never after anything and, like that. And this is like the old school DJ setup with two vinyls. How did you, how did you play parties? Would it be like actual, actual vinyls and records mixing yeah. it, like scratching? That's crazy. Yeah, that's awesome. actual vinyls. And I still have the same needles. Like, I've gone through a few needles, but I have all the needles that I went through since basically day one. Like, and, they, and they're secondhand as well. They were bought secondhand, so they're very old. And they'll probably worth a good bit now at the minute. So I'm, I'm, I'm never going to get rid of them. And then the mixer, yeah, and the mixer. And we were just plug in. <laughs> we just plug into an amp. So we're trying to bring an amp. Like, we, we did a few parties together, but I would do the odds, uh, mm. you know, cover for a DJ in town or whatever. But it would be, yeah, final. Like CDs, CDs and USB were the CD um, kind of setups were already in, but I just loved mm. the vinyl. Like I couldn't, I couldn't dance with the CD or the USB. Like USB stick laptops, a lot of them were using that as well. But I, when I seen that, I was like, no, that's not, that's not what I like. It's not that for me, you know. And then, and then I just fell over. Then you know, I got older, and that's the, that's the crack. Then you you kind of move on to the next thing. So yeah, yeah, was the first, yeah. Do you uh do you ever listen to music while you paint? Do you, do you still get inspiration from that? Oh, oh yeah, Jesus, yeah. Sure you want uh, you won't you won't know any music I listen to now, especially the Irish stuff. Like what kind of music minute, is it? Uh, like it changes. It's usually just two types, like kind of trance, um mm. kind of sci trance, uh deep melodic, kind of tantra dance music. So it's one yeah. A, a, cu- a couple of different types of dance music with no lyrics, just long breaks and deep melodies and like just you know long drawn out uh, like Eric Prids that kind of crack, like, you know. Mm. But then, but then on the other side, Irish like wild, wild Irish traditional music with like no again no lyrics, just like and it's funny they're they're very they're similar in the way that they have long drawn out kind of um, the tunes are very long. Some of the some of the Irish tunes could be eight or nine minutes, and it's just like yeah. you could have it. You could have a, you could have a group of ten instruments there, and it's just bananas. Like if you were listening to this stuff, the the walls would be bouncing, like you know, bounds and all the traditional music, and it just yeah. Wow, you gotta wow, send me. Uh, wow. You gotta you gotta send me a playlist so uh, so I can try yeah. it out. I was saying, yeah, like it's it's just bananas. Like and it, it's hard to describe when you're not Irish. I don't think it, you might get you might get the same feeling, but like if the way it waves over me is just it's pure euphoric. Um, it's a pure euphoria, like you know, it's just it just comes over you in waves, and the way the tunes are 
set up like it's just they, they kind of start slow and they build and they build and they build and then it's just you're bouncing you're bouncing and the whole room is bouncing and then the paint in the course you see it's just it's, it's explosive because a lot of them are guided by that not not all the time but some of them are like the ones that are really explosive and they look like something just blew up on the canvas they're they're really energetic yeah. Irish or yeah it's it's unreal yeah. I love it. like, and it's cool, there's a yeah. uh... There's there's a couple playlists I have on Spotify where it, it sounds similar. It'll be this pounding, not like too hard pounding, but like a constant mm. like mm, mm, and trance melodic in the background, but no lyrics. And I put that on low yeah. when I'm writing <laughs> or I'm preparing for a podcast, doing research, writing out topics and stuff like that. And yeah. silence is great. It, it's my second preference for preparation but there's nothing like a good trance like song kicking you into focus oh, I, I i get an extra yeah. creative boost from being in a rhythm and having that energy sometimes i'm i'm i feel like i'm too low energy to be creative at points during the day and putting on a playlist helps me uh just get back into the rhythm yeah big time yeah 100 percent agree with that and like Oh, will you stop? And it, it can't, no matter how you're feeling, when you put plug in and start that music, it, it just, it just, it rises you. It lifts you out mm-hmm. whatever you have going on and you're in then. That's why, I, that's why I learned, I started to learn instruments because like my dad is really musical and my family, my cousins and stuff. And like, you know, I was years around that, but I never, I never tried it. So like I, I have all that in me when I hear that music, that Irish music, I just get transported to that time and I just get lifted. And I'm like, fuck this. I want to be able to do this. Like, you know, I want to be able to do this as well. And same thing. It's just, it's unbelievable. It's again, like, you know, if you were to look at any of my paintings and then listen to what I'm listening to, you'd be like, oh yeah, that's where you got that from. <laughs> yeah. Especially the Irish stuff. Oh, we just, oh, sure. If you listen to it in the car, you'd fucking wrap it around the tree. You'd be bouncing down the road. Like, oh, we just, oh, unreal. yeah. Yeah. Have have you ever have you ever thought about making some kind of digital display with your art where you combine the music with the the paintings and you know making it move somehow or just making mm-hmm. it an, an a digital some kind of digital experience where people can listen but also see the the painting come to life? Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah, and like I've had some some. Some producers have reached out to me to try something, but it, it didn't really it didn't really go anywhere because at the time when we were talking about it, NFTs were building up, were blowing up. Mm. So they were kind of like they're kind of like, well, look, we'll see what's going on in this space, and maybe we can do it then. But yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know, not not really. Yeah. Like I've I've done I've done um, paintings for DJs listening to their stuff because at the time. I, I wanted to go to the gigs and I was like, can I just hang out backstage somewhere or maybe get a view of the stage and I can make a painting using, using this energy live. Cause I do it when I'm in my studio. Like, so, mm. so, so that, that's, that's another thing. That's another thing that's coming, but it's, um, digitally, you know, not really like I, I had a guy use, do you know, those Spotify, um, if you're if you're listening to Spotify and the background is all moving and it's like it's kind of like a music mm. video, but it's basically just so yeah, it, it has uh, the produ- the projection in the background. Yeah, yeah. So a producer took one of my paintings and he gave it to his um his basically content creator guy and, and they used it for like one of the backgrounds. But oh, like, that's dope. It, it, yeah, but it's really hard to like. I, I can see it obviously because it's my painting, but like if you were to look at that, you wouldn't think it was a painting. You would just think that's just colors flying around and you know, mm. so it's, I, I just felt a bit disconnected with it, even though like I knew it was mine. It didn't have that, what I thought he was using it for. It didn't come across to me, but, um, but I'll send so it to he, you and you can do so it. He took it it's, it's, he, he took your painting and then animated it kind of moving around, jumping yeah. around. So, so it's not a still frame. It's, it's actually moving. No, 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 no. Yeah. And it, but there's loads of other things overlaid on it. Like there's, it's like, it's at a live gig, but it's like, it's like silhouettes of people dancing and lights and it's, it's, it's carnage. Like, but, like the painting represents a great, but it the painting mm. kind of, it, it doesn't, it's not really a paint. It, it's hard to kind of see the connect. Well, I, I think it is anyway. I don't know, but 
I, I'll send it on to you in your gazebo. It's um yeah, it's it's that was the, that was kind of only digital thing. Other than that, I've done it myself. I just download an app yeah. and try and animate them myself. <laughs> and that was deadly. Yeah. Jesus, that was hanging on somebody's wall. Oh my god, never mind your track or your fucking mushrooms. Yeah. Just stick this yoke up on your wall and you'd be oh yeah. a different world. I'm oh. I'm just gonna I forgot to bring over my coffee cup. I'm just gonna grab it. I'll be right back. Oh, I don't know about it. Jesus. Absolute rookie. How long are you how long are you making these podcasts and you forgot your cup? <laughs> I might go up here beside me. I love you think with, with the Jeff Black coffee in it. Oh, yourself. I'm back with the crack. <laughs> I was just saying, how long are you doing this? And the you natural crack. <laughs> the yeah. uh, yeah, exactly. I was uh, that, that's always there's always something uh th- that I I forget right before I'm like I have everything recording and then I'm like oh fuck I forgot uh forgot my coffee cup again <laughs> or Lacroix yeah, uh beer whiskey depending on what time of day I'm recording. Um yeah. so so with with your with your drawings I I went back on your Instagram to around april 2020 may 2020 when you first started and you, and you put out okay. what 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 you said the the drawings and the sketches there was a lot more figures uh more uh colored colored pencils or, or crayons and then you could see the yeah. progression as you go forward into the more abstract style where i'm probably not expressing it right because i i'm not good with artist terminology but it became neither am I. <laughs> le- it, 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 be, it became it became less obvious figures and more kind of these colorful splotches of ideas and it was a feeling like i would look at your painting the the more recent paintings and you just get a, a like a feeling like anger or sadness it wasn't a picture of someone sad but it's more of mm. these layers and colorings and and patterns and designs that you know i guess that's why they call it abstract because it's not it it, it doesn't look like the real version of something it's more of the the emotional projection of the way something makes you feel if if that if that's mm. correct, I mean that could be totally wrong. You might you might see it a different way, but that that's how I was experiencing it when I was looking at your paintings. Yeah, yeah, Jason, no, you're dead right. It's um, there's a lot in that. <laughs> but uh, ah, look, sure, look, you're dead right, Zach. Like that's that's exactly what it is. It's just pure expression, and it it sure, it can only be that. Like when you look at if you were to go back on my Instagram or if anybody listened to this did. And got to that point that you got to where it starts to turn to just marks and splotches. I when that when that was happening, I was blindfolding myself and I was creating because I was like I was doing a lot of you know figurative and drawing animals and you know just doing random stuff. But I was getting bored of that. I was like, this is how do people how do people do this every day? It's so boring. So then I was like, yeah. I'll stick this blindfold on because I would just. I was always trying to find out like different ways of doing it. So I said, right, I'll get this. Well, it wasn't even a blindfold. It was a scarf. <laughs> I got a scarf. And uh, I just put it over my eyes and I would just scribble, 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 yeah. and then try and try and see what was in the scribbles. And then, and then the videos, of course, I started making videos then. And the early days of videos are me blindfolded and trying to, like I would take the blindfold off and hold the, the, the picture in front of me and I would, the score, I try and interpret what it was. Why am I seeing, why am I seeing an elephant on one roller skate? Why is that there? You know, and I recorded all that. <laughs> oh, yeah. stop. It's like, it's like self psychoanalysis, uh, but it was brilliant. And, and that was the switch then for me to go, Jesus, I don't need, I don't need to think of an idea of, of a cat or an album, or I don't need, I can just, I can just pick up a, a, a marker and just, make a mark and then I can take that yeah. mark and go that way. And if it's going from north to south, then I can go from east to west and then I can go everywhere. And then that was the Paint- switch for me to. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was going to say painting, painting blindfolded seems like such a counterintuitive thing because painting is so visual. So you'd think that the if you were only going to have one sense, it would be your vision and then everything else is secondary. But then to take that away, it would be like if I, was recording a podcast and I 
blocked out my hearing. Like I, re- I recorded a podcast with earplugs and I couldn't <laughs> hear what the guest was saying. And yeah. I was just guessing to respond. But that I'm sure led to some creative realizations or, or when you when you take out one sense, you focus on your other senses more. Did, yeah. what, what, what did you realize by painting blindfolded? That um, that you can so that just taught me that you can use your feelings and you can use your you can use your subconscious. You know you can turn off your brain and do it. You don't have to you don't have to look at for inspiration from anywhere. You can just go in. You can go in and you can go into your memories and you can go into your trauma a lot of the time for for me and you can dig all that up and get that onto a camp. You know and it's like. It's not. It's not exactly going to be the time when I was fucking off my tits at the electric picnic, and you know I'm staring down the barrel of a week's recovery. It's not exactly that, but you can. But that can come up, you know, and then you can use that, and that's what the blindfold taught me. Uh, yeah. to just let subcon- let subconscious take over, and I do. That's the way I do it to this day because it's the only way. It's the only way that I I know I will never get bored of, but also at the same time represents me. It represents everything about me, you know, just loose and, you know, chaotic and energetic and colorful and, and wild and spontaneous. That's all me and it's all on every painting. So that's what the blindfold did for me. And thanks to the jays as I did it early, because if I was still doing them cats and them trees, I'd have fucking blown my brains out because I, there's nothing in that. There's nothing in that for me, uh, you know. I'm going to, so, I'm going to try, I'm going to try that next time I'm driving down the I-95. I'm going to go, I'm going to go blindfolded. And then when I get pulled yeah. over, I'm going to, I'm going to tell the officer I was driving with my feelings. Yeah, there you go. I'm letting the subconscious yeah. take over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. no, know? no, but seriously, seriously, it does uh, feel as a creative, as a creative limitation, it does sound interesting. Now that I'm, now that I'm hearing you say that, I'm imagining mm. what might happen if I recorded a podcast blindfolded or recorded it in pitch black. Because it wouldn't be exactly the same. If I was recording this podcast with my eyes closed, I would be seeing the light from the window. You know, I'm, I'm closing my eyes right now yeah. for people list, for people listening, but I see the light from the window and then that <clears> starts <throat> to create shapes and then your imagination takes yeah. over. And then if I was in the pitch black, that can get even more intense at times so yeah maybe yeah, i'll try yeah. that just like record a solo podcast blindfolded and see what happens yeah i, I was just thinking you should do, do you know what you could do um blind blindfolded and put those like uh or you could you could stick something in your ears just stick something noise canceling in your ears turn off all the lights turn everything off and just turn the voice record on your phone and just turn it upside down or lay down and put it on your chest and yeah just, Talk and just talk and just see what happens, see what comes out. Because I'm telling you, once you, once you free your free your brain and free your mind and free your judgment of all that, I'm telling you, yeah. you're, you're tapping into you're tapping into your truth. Like not not to be fucking sappy and wishy washy about it, but you fucking are Zach. That's what I did, and it's scary and it's frightening. Like a lot of those uh, blindfolded things that I did frightened the shit on me because I was like holy fuck like I'm after digging up a memory there that I, I like I didn't even know I, I did or I, I would ever thought I'd be able to tap into and once you start doing that on the reg then then you start tapping into Jesus I should be doing this all the time what am I doing here mm. and then then you start then you start clicking with it and it all starts falling into place and I'm telling you like people will people will probably listen to this or think of this uh, what is he talking about but it's the fucking it is the truth when you free, get rid of all the noise, the outside, and it's like meditation and all that crap. You get rid of all the noise and get rid of everything that's guiding you and just fucking go. No talk, no nothing. Go with whatever it is you you think you're supposed to do or what you're doing, and you'll you'll get there. You'll you'll be guided to the, in the, on the on the right path. And by Jesus, yeah. I got there within a, within a matter of days. I got there, and I fucking I haven't looked yeah. back. So it's worth that's, trying for everyone. You know. That's, that's- that's okay. really cool. So, so for you, you wouldn't just see the imagery behind your eyes, but you would actually see memories. It, the blindfolding would spark memories, and you would tap into those. It, in in what I had created, it would. Yeah. Mm. So I would the blindfold would go on for about a minute, and I would just make marks and scratches, and then I would look at it, and then 
not not a lot of the time it, it was just like I might have seen a chicken or maybe just a cow formation or something. But sometimes yeah. I, I actually see myself I see myself in the back of an ambulance or face mm-hmm. planted into my garden. You know, I, that was brought up and that shit like that that happened to me that I th- I tried to bury. You know, it's fucking scary, like, you know, really scary. But it was amazing therapy. Sure, it was therapy. Like. Yeah. And by the end, yeah. oh, like, and then there's nothing can stop you then when you have all that up and you, when you accept all that and, and kind of, you know, be with yourself when, when you're in that moment and you're, you go back to that time. Oh, by the end, it's powerful stuff. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's where it all goes to now for me. That's, that's something I struggle with as a podcaster is blocking out everything that's going on in your brain or going on in the environment and then locking in and, and being in that creative flow state. Because even right now I have the cameras in front of me, I have lights, I have yeah. a recorder and I've gotten good at ignoring those things. So I, I look into the camera, like I'm looking at a guest for remote podcasting. So it feels like we're having a conversation. The recorder, mm. you know, I, I do all these backup things before the podcast. So it, it goes into the back of my mind i'm not i'm not constantly worrying every 10 minutes oh fuck did the the recorder stop or is the camera still recording all this all this stuff and over time that's just something you get better with but but there's never it's never a hundred percent you can get to 95 percent of i have everything set up maybe you even have someone else who's producing it for you but there's always these reminders that there's an external environment that's yeah. recording somehow or that's watching you somehow and some sometimes i wish i could just take a guest go on a you know go on a mountain and just record a podcast with nothing e- even without a recorder and just have that be recorded but but you you at least need the the microphone and yeah. something to to record the conversation so i would like to to do something like a series in nature no camera not recorded just take a bunch of guests go on a fucking hike and then like record record a conversation at the top for 45 minutes an hour however long and it's just super in the moment and to me yeah. that's about as far away from the the external and external pressure that you can get is just being out in nature yeah you should do that easily so that's easily done <laughs> where are you? You're in Brooklyn, are you? Or in, in somewhere new? Where about Brooklyn? Yeah, 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 Brooklyn. So, like, how many how many potential guests are in within an arm's reach of you there that are fucking dying to get out into nature? There's oh, thousands, 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 thousands. Yeah, yeah, so fucking easily done. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. 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 <laughs> the video. So, so the video is great because. Obviously, YouTube is a huge search engine and a lot of people watch mm-hmm. podcasts and watch clips. So I, I do like having the video for podcasts because a lot of people reach out to me and say that they watch it on video. But I, I would like to do maybe a series of five or six episodes once a year where it's just mm-hmm. no video. If you want to if you want to watch it, you have to listen to it. It's just out it's in nature, listen, yeah. just a recorder and then that's about it so the, it's true that there are guests all around you and there's studios all around you and we have this idea yeah. we have this concept in our head of this is a studio it, it has to have these lights and this this thousand dollar camera and the <laughs> chairs have to be in this l shape but really you know you can ma- you can make a studio anywhere that for a podcast you can record sound that's really all you need for podcasts so i'm definitely gonna explore more things in line with that yeah yeah that'd be worth doing where would you go now have you any idea where where would i go i i would probably go somewhere in in the hudson valley there's some good mountains up there that that aren't too challenging because when Mm. if you if we did a really challenging hike it might be difficult to to record a full-length podcast at the top so something that's medium difficulty maybe you know five or six miles and then we record a podcast yeah. and and head back probably hudson yeah, valley yeah. somewhere yeah it sounds good james that'd be deadly you know we listen to that yeah big time yeah, yeah. because a lot of the, a lot of the because i think well this is just what i think no i'm not i don't know but what would happen there is now your guests would probably start to think fuck i, I don't do this enough and then you'd start getting into when you take the noise away and the 
especially in fucking Brooklyn, Jays, it's like there's sirens and everything going by your window every day. You take all that away, they start getting into, well, Jays, what am I actually doing here? Like, when all everything gets lifted, they start getting in tune to that because, you know, you feel that when you're in the... Because I live in the middle of nowhere here. Well, not in the middle of nowhere, but I'm in the countryside. And when I go for a walk, 10 minutes in the woods there, you start getting in tune to what's, what, what am I at here now, you know? That starts happening. Mm. But when you have, if you have, a, if you're recording that, that's gold. Like, that'd be brilliant. You know, especially if it's an artist, like, I don't know, any a musician or something that are, you know, and they start questioning their existence they might think about maybe a new musical direction or going going down some path that they never tapped into because they've never they've never had silence or stillness or anything like that so mm. you know that's potentially what's there for that so I'll fucking hurry up <laughs> let's yeah. go oh, yeah they'll, they'll either they'll either think that or they'll think this guy's gonna fucking kill me and dump the body <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then and then, uh, and then and then and then I'll re- release release the episode and be like, I don't know what happened. That they, you know, he was with me when we finished the hike. No yeah, idea. Yeah. Um, he left everything. He left and, and then everything I can make it. Hand. And then I can make it into one of those uh, serial killer murder podcasts that blow up like millions yeah. of uh, millions millions of downloads overnight. That that would be probably the most popular podcast in america overnight if there was a serial killer that they had no idea where this person was but he was recording podcasts and releasing them every day like i just can't i just killed this person this is how i did it i dumped the body like this is where this person is and i'm off to the next spot and they're just doing a live like every day checking in that that would that would be overnight the most popular show oh you still and make sure you're at five stars. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would be unreal. Well, look, that's that's there yeah. too potentially. It's not yeah. there when you're sitting on your hole in fucking Brooklyn, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, no. Um, so I I wanted to go through one of your paintings specifically just to to ask you about the process, <laughs> and that one of your I believe it was the the most recent painting you put up on your Instagram, I wanted to get something that was fresh in your mind. So there's mm. the the piece called Lola's Dream. It's the one that oh, has all yeah, the... Yeah. All, all. So I'm going to throw this up on the video for people watching on YouTube so they can have an idea of the actual painting. Yeah. But can you walk me through the process of, of Lola's Dream from the idea to to actual actually painting it with the colors and layers what was running Mm. through your mind and how did you come to create this piece so it's funny that you picked this one because you'll get an insight now into how my commission work happens because this is a commission Mm. so like a lot of the time well not a lot of time all the time now uh since since probably i'd say september of 2020 uh the commission work somebody will come to me and go, look, I'm looking for this size in these colors and that's it. Mm. And then you go, you go and you do you. So that's basically how it, that starts. That's the, the, that's basically the start of the process. They have an idea of, you know, they might have a, a wall that they, they might think a, co- a particular color palette would look nice on. And they would say, go and go and do whatever you want to do with those colors. And, this commission was just chai um autumnal style colours. Mm. Not not a not a colour code specifically or anything, just autumnal, autumn scene, whatever. And I said, right, crash. And I said, What size? And let's go then. And then it just it's weeks then. It's weeks of a journey. It's well not <laughs> I ain't calling it a journey off book. It's so sappy, but it's uh it's just it's a it's a long it ta- it takes time, a lot of movement. Um, a lot of just sitting at it and looking at it, and so it kind where of do you, starts. where yeah, where do you even start from a uh, from a specific standpoint? Because I'm looking at the painting yeah. and it's beautiful. There's so many layers. There's a lot of orange, a lot of blues, but it, it's it's not just as simple as you know. You pick your, you draw the lines, then you color in the blue and the oranges like it looks like there's so yeah. much detail and strokes that go into it so how like what you have the blank canvas once you pick the canvas size how do you how did you then go about making this one uh so just 
uh, with the with the colours, I got I got, I tried to get as many what I thought were autumnal colours to me. So I okay. start, as soon as they as soon as they said those words, I immediately went had a bit of a ponder on it, meditation. Uh, what what does autumn mean to me? What do I see when I think of autumnal? And autumn is one of my favourite seasons, especially in Ireland. It's it's magic over here in in autumn and September and October and that. So I just thought, how can I paint something that... So a lot of my memories of autumn are lying down in leaves and looking up and, like, kicking leaves and just, like, jumping in them, dancing in them and climbing trees and looking up at, like, piercing blue skies, not a cloud in the sky. Uh, So that's what I tried to recreate with that. And so I just started then, you know, put down a bit of blue, my whole layer of blue, uh, see how that looks see how the kind of different shades of blue as well like there's there's not just one there's probably three different shades of blue and I don't ask me mm. the name the names of the colours of that <laughs> like, yeah, <I> <laughs> so yeah tell me tell me specifically tell me the specific <laughs> name and the product and the product number yeah oh stop I get in trouble but yeah, yeah so it's just that and then I kind of just see when, when one layer goes down I see what way the different shades connect and then then I look at it and go, right, does that look like, I close my eyes then and go, does that look like what I'm trying to, does that look like me lying down and looking up in an autumn, say an autumn evening in the woods or whatever? And then you just kind of start picking, so I have all the colours in front of me and I just start taking them and just throwing them down straight out of the tube or straight onto a, onto a palette knife from my hand and I just start throwing it mm. down and just kind of running my hand or whatever tool I'm using, a, a palette knife, or a trowel, I use it uh, like you know trowels that you use in the garden, like to dig up you know plants and stuff. So to run that over the the kind of where the different shades of the first layer have connected, and where I'm trying to overlay that, then I just run the tool or my hand over, and then it just it's and then that, let that layer dry and look at it, and maybe turn the if the canvas is kind of lengthways, I'll turn it on its head, and then I look mm-hmm. at it a different way, and go now how's it looking, and then one corner of it might need more blue or. I might have to start bringing in branches. That's what I, with that particular painting. But the branches were, you know, lashings of real aggressive strokes, like with a with a brush, with a, you know, with a mm. dark brown or maybe a light brown. And then it's just layers upon layers of that weeks. That took, that painting took three weeks, I think, nearly. And um, yeah, and that was basically it. It was just layers of that black. And then it's it, like, I got it to where I wanted it to be, you know, that's just what I, that's, that's what mm. people trust me with now. And, like I was delighted with how it ended up because um, when I look, when I've been, I've been back there and I've seen the painting up on a wall and I was delighted with it and I ne- I've never really done that. It's just because they're local here. Like I so you know, I I seen it up and it, I was delighted with it. It was weird, but I was really happy and it was yeah. when I had it here, I was like, yeah, that's where I wanted. It does look like me laying down on the ground looking up at the sky in autumn when I'm a kid but when it was up on the wall it was a whole different whole different ball game you know but it was amazing and delighted with it so I was gonna say I was gonna say as soon as you mentioned lying down and looking up at the sky that's exactly what it looks like where you have the the blue (laughs) in between the orange and it, it looks like you're you're lying yeah it looks like you're lying on your back in uh, like a a forest and fall or something, and you're looking through the leaves, through the blue sky, and yeah. it's it's I guess that's why they call it uh, abstract expressionism because there's an even though it's not the the specific object, Freeze. there's an i there's yeah. an idea there's an idea behind it, and as soon yeah. as you said it, I was like, oh shit, like that's the the, it, it looks yeah. exactly like what you're describing like that feeling yeah, of yeah. Li- lying on your back and just looking up yeah well, that's great yeah but that's that's it that's all it is like it's that easy you know well it's not easy but it's you know when you're describing it and it kind of comes off the way you what you see is in your head and what you feel when you think of that is there yeah. then you're you're golden and that's what people get you know people trust me to get there with them I don't always get there now to be fair it's a lot of them are struggle but you know, all you can yeah. do is swing, swing, and see what happens. Hold for a home run every time. Yeah, that's. I would say that's probably transforming your ideas into concrete 
creations is the hardest part of being a creative, especially at the beginning, because you have this idea of what your podcast or painting or song is going to look like and sound like. And then you make your first one and it sounds like shit or looks like shit. And, and you're like, this isn't how I imagine myself. But when you imagine yourself at the beginning as a creator, for me at least, I was imagining myself 1,000 reps in the future. So when I imagine a podcast now, I imagine how my podcasts are going to look a 1,000 podcasts from now. And it took me a while to realize that. Like when you have this idea in your head of how something's going to come out, your imagination is so much better than how you work in real time because it takes all these reps to catch up to what you're imagining. And then once you've caught up to that initial imagination, then your imagination has already leaped in front of you. And it's like, all right, you're capable of this now. Now I'm going to torture you with this vision. Like you figured, <laughs> you figured out how to record a podcast on a, on a phone with a single shot in a studio. Now I'm going to like show you what you can do with a, a gimbal or a slider or 4k video or designing a completely different set, like all these things. And yeah. it's, it, it, it can torture you if you let yourself become obsessed with your your concrete creations having to line up perfectly with your imagination because <laughs> that that's part of what makes it fun it's that it doesn't come out how you imagined it and then you always have this goal in front of you this this moving uh this moving window of okay i, I want it to look like this now i want it to sound like this now and then your entire life you, you never get there completely but it's always within that reach yeah and that's the curve that's the curse of all anybody in a creative field. It's it's never good enough. And you're always on to the next thing. You know, like when you finish this podcast, you're like, who's next? Or what's, yeah. you know, what's, what am I going to get out of that? It's always, how am I going to clip this? Or whatever. It's just nonstop. But that's just, but that's just part of the creative mind. Like you can't turn it off. You know, it's just the way it goes. You can, you can, you can, you know, you can sit inside, you can do your meditations and all that. But like if it's your mm. if it's your thing and it's your truth and it's what you're supposed to do, you can't switch that off. And you shouldn't either. You know, you should you know, I welcome all that crap, you know. But it's it's interesting, you know, it is that's why my my if you were looking at my Instagram, my style is changing like rapidly because it's just mm. I'm mad every day. I'm flat out, like I'm just paintings you know, the it, the, the house is filled, like it's because I'm 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 always at it. That's why it'll, yeah. it's, it's constantly evolving, you know. So, but that's what's great about it because the constant evolution, you know, we yeah. want to be fucking sitting still and you know drawing trees every day. Fuck that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a curse, but it's also what makes you so great because you, you're, if you were too satisfied with a painting, then you wouldn't paint enough, or maybe you would stop and you go, okay, this is the best it's ever gonna get. I'm done now and then maybe six months later you pick up the brush again or if I recorded a podcast mm -hmm. and you know like after the Mark Norman one that was that was a a huge podcast for me in terms of doing it with someone who has such a large following and as yeah. soon as I released it literally as soon as I uploaded it to to YouTube I that feeling completely went away where I'm like all right I'm 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 preparing for the next one as I'm editing this one so you never really you're never really completely satisfied. You do it. It's as best as it's going to be. And then you move on to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a shame because like, you know, a thing where you have, you have big moments like that in your careers or whatever, or your fields. And like, like you, you with that normal episode, I'm sure is your biggest one or me doing a huge commission. I, I might enjoy that for a moment or, or yeah. an evening. An evening, maybe, and then it's like, right, you want some X? Let's go. It, yeah. it, it, it's a shame, like, but sure, that's just it is. Like, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's hard, like, it's yeah, cool. it's good, it's good to take a you know, a day or j j at least a few hours to reflect on a big accomplishment and go, wow, mm -hmm. that was really fucking sick. I, I did that, that's a huge step for me. And then yeah. if you do that too much, if you do that too much, you're never gonna get any work done. So, I used to no. not. I used to not appreciate the uh, the accomplishments along the way at all because I always thought, you know, this it's just the next one. I'm already I'm already getting it ready. I'm already yeah. chopping it up, and now I'm getting much better at recognizing. Okay, you just recorded a great podcast. You know, go out, 
you know, have a drink with your buddies tonight, you know, relax, watch a movie, whatever. And then the next day you're back at it again and giving yourself that, that moment of separation. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Yeah, it is. You, you, you can't, you can't dwell too long, you know, cause it's like, you can kind of get driven a bit, bit, a bit queer if, if you do that. Cause you, you can't wait around too long either. Cause you know, the next, the next guest or the next um, commission or the next opportunity is gone, you know, and then mm. you start going, oh, so look, he, he's not going to do it, but at least I had Norman there two weeks ago. At least I still have that. But you can't, that's not the way, it, that's not the way to be thinking about it, you know, or yeah. for me, like, oh, well, look, I did a, I did a big commission there a month ago, so that's okay. I don't need to do another one. It's just, that's not the way yeah. it works. You have to just keep going. And if you don't get one, just keep working do something else do a, do a solo part if you don't have a guest or whatever yeah oh yeah yeah that's, that's i mean that's why i like solo podcast because you know the only the only thing that's stopping me from a, recording a podcast is myself on those days because it's, a guest could cancel you know maybe you have an equipment malfunction over the internet but all you need is your phone and a, a little mic that plugs into it to record a solo episode. So I'll, I'll always have that as a podcaster to just yeah. talk into the mic by myself. Yeah, happy days. It's that easy, right? It's, it's amazing. It's so easy. Right? Uh, yeah, it, it's, I mean, it can be, it can be jarring because you're listening to yourself and there's no one to bounce the energy off of so right now you know this to me conversations are so much more natural because you you get energy from someone back you respond you listen but then when you have a solo podcast you have to oh you have to like listen to yourself almost and respond to what you just said but then as you're responding you're also thinking of the next thing that you're gonna say so it's it's i wouldn't say it's hard like it's 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 just it's weird because you're literally just talking into a microphone. Mm. So te- technically and physically, it's not hard, but it's you just need to get used to it. And it's dra- it's probably draining as well. You're probably you'd be you'd be fairly shook after sitting down talking to yourself for an hour. Well, I would be. <laughs> it's good. It's 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 good for stamina. It's good to build up conversational stamina. That's the way I think about it yeah. in terms of in terms of reps, I always go back to my baseball days where I'm like, all right, if I want to get stronger in a certain exercise, I need to build up with repetitions and keep adding weight. And so when I have a three hour conversation with someone, it helps me to have one hour solo podcast in the middle. So I'm not going at a one week without doing anything. It's kind of like this, this check-in point where I'm talking for an hour, verbalizing ideas and that keeps me sharper rather than if I did nothing, which I, I'm sure you have a lot of things too, um, not just painting your final drawings and painting your final pieces, but doing other exercises where you're kind of keeping yourself sharp in between the bigger projects. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I'm sure not just like it's not even paint. Like it's not painting either like I, I, as i said the instruments are great as well for for mm. kind of create creative um what would you say just just scratching the creative itches like you yeah. know because you know if you spend a whole week painting there you start to go a bit uh, i kind of i go into i'm in the paintings and it's that's not a nice place to be either you start to go a bit mad like and you have to kind of jump out of it then and then i have like I, again i need to drum there and the a couple of instruments and yeah. do that writing as well and, and thinking. I do a lot of like exercise and just a lot of like meditation and all that stuff. I love all that. Yeah. And, um, like that. That's that. It's all. It's all connected. Zach. Like if I if I don't exercise, everything else crumbles. Like or if I don't, you know, if I don't beat on the drum there for a while, or or if I don't do a painting, you know, like I, it's all. It all falls away. So you have to keep on top of eating, eating well. Like it's all the boring stuff, basically. <laughs> so mm. like it's the stuff yeah. that works. It's the stuff that helps, and uh, yeah, it, it's, it's it's all connected. If I have a couple of pints yeah. on a Friday night, and I'm I'm shook, and I don't if I don't exercise or paint or whatever, it's it could turn into a week, and then what the fuck are you doing then? Yeah. So, oh yeah, it it, it snowballs. So, yeah. so, so Lola's dream you said is a commission painting. 
Yeah. So, so how does your process change when you have a, a non commissioned painting when it's a, when it's a self generated idea, like once mm-hmm. you have the idea, how do you, how do you know where to go? What are you going for? The colors, like, do you, do you have it all placed in front of you? Like how, how are you thinking once you have that idea, whatever it is, what mm-hmm. is your, what is your actual workflow look like? And ter- you, you mentioned you have the, the garden palette, you have the colors in front of you. Is that the same thing for non-commissioned paintings? Yeah. Yeah. They're all, it's all the same. It's all the same. Yeah. Crap. Like the only thing is, um, the only thing that changes is like, I, I might be specific to, to a, maybe three or four colors for a commission. A lot of the commissions are kind of, they'd be fairly strict in what they want because, you know, they're big and they're, they're, they're going into new houses and things like that. So, you know, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't go too crazy outside of what they're looking for. But the only thing that changes is that the amount of colors I use or maybe, maybe the size of them. Like I have one huge canvas here that's just, I'm just doing on my own just for fun. And there's about, it probably weighs five kilos. It's so heavy with the amount of layers that are on it. But like, it's just pure when it's just half an hour, 45 minutes every evening of yeah. just coming up and re- just release it's just an energy release and it's just basically just getting just getting everything out um i'd say it's it's similar to like a punching bag or you know going for a long run it's just get up and move around it put it on the wall put it on the floor put it on put it sideways uh just just jump on it whatever way i can but it's not for anyone it's just for me so mm. but again it's, it's the same thing it's the same same process it's just layers and layers and layers of different uh b- different brush strokes different um you know stroke techniques different colors and uh m- maybe by the guy the one i'm doing now is there's not i'm not really listening to music while i do it i'm just jumping into it after work and uh mm. yeah that's basically it it's, it's all the same it's unreal they look they, a lot of them like a lot of the recent ones are kind of a similar color palette if you were to look at my instagram mm. apart from Lola's dream they're all kind of they're all like cosmic kind of flare um mm. what would you say yeah kind of outer space kind of style well that's what people are telling me um but like that's just i have more more of those colors <laughs> it's just yeah. whatever colors i have yeah like it's that, it's that simple you know but they look on re- like i really like those recent ones uh and that's why i kind of stuck on that stuck on that buzz because when i did the first one uh, I like I'm, I'm I'm not long using paintbrushes. I only started this year, and I I did a small one with a paintbrush with those colors, and it looked unreal. Like I did it on Christmas mm. Day, and uh, it got annihilated online. It got absolutely hopped off, and I was like, "Jesus, that was class!" I don't know how he made that, but I I'll try to make another one, and then it just snowballed, and then the the pages yeah. got bigger, and then it, it they went on the canvas. So like it just if you see like say my post from around Christmas onwards. They're all kind of similar because that's just I did I did one that way and then it just boom it just it flew after that. So yeah. And you said that one, you said that one was with a smaller paintbrush. It, it wasn't with the uh, the palette. Yeah, yeah, that was the first time I used the brush. Is it, it just a okay. little? I bought it for a while. Like I bought a bag of ten of them for two euro in, in a like a cheap, you know, a dollar say a dollar store. You know, a really cheap paintbrushes and you know and then when i used the small ones i was like jesus i wonder if i made these bigger what would happen and then i just i went yeah. and bought bigger ones and got a bigger canvas and it just exploded in front of me and went holy shit so now i just started using that it's it's, it's amazing yeah. the way it works like how it can start small and then you can just you, you just go bigger and then but then a lot of the time i will still use the small brushes just for texture and you know i might do one layer with it with a trowel and then get a small brush fill in a few gaps yeah. and then just keep going. That's why what you see in, in Lola Stream, like there's a lot of depth in that because it's just layers of different different kind of techniques, like a small brush. Then I'll go over that brush with like a, I would run like at the edge of a cardboard box, like say like this edge. I would put loads of different colors of paint straight out of the tube along that and then run it over the whole canvas and that would just, it, would, it just looks amazing. And yeah. then you just let that dry and then you fill in more gaps and then you just keep going and go, and then you flip around and do it a different way, and it's just it's it it starts transforming to this 
it's just, it, but the best way to describe it, like, the feeling of doing it is like, it's yours, it's, it's yours, you are doing this, like, there's no, the, the best thing about abstract expressionism is, is this cannot be copied, you can't recreate this. The mm. way I'm standing, like, the way my hands and the way my arms and shoulders are directing all this cannot be mimicked, and that's why it's so special. Do you have... So, so you start out with an idea. You said for the for Lola's dream, you started out with autumnal colors, fall colors. Mm. When you when you're making a painting for yourself, do you have an image in your mind the whole time while you're painting, or does it become that image, become that sort of expression as you're painting? Like, does it reveal itself to you, or do you have that feeling you're trying to capture from the beginning? Uh, no, ne- ne- I've never, I don't really have anything in, in my head. I might have, I might have a, I might have like a shape, so, but like mm. a lot of the time when you put that down, what's in your head, it's fucking pure muck. It doesn't look, I, again, like what you were saying, when you get it out and you look at it, you go, Jesus, that's not what, I, that's not what I, I was going for at all. But then, then it will transform. I mean, you just, like, it just, you build the layers and then it just starts to transform into something that you're like, holy shit, this is this is something now. And then, then you might it, it, a lot of the time they'll tell you the pains will tell you that I'm done here now. Even us, I'm, I'm you know stop like you know. And then I stop because a lot of them, a lot of the canvas might only have two or three layers, and they're done in yeah. a matter of hours. Some some take months, some take yeah. hours. It it just depends. It's all it, feeling. It, yeah, that's so. So it's feeling because I, I that's something I wanted to ask you is. How do you know when you're done? Because, you know, <laughs> I, I've I've done the most amateur paintings you could think of, like the classic fruit basket in high school. You're just but and no oh, matter no no matter that. no matter how bad it is, no matter how bad my paintings were, I had a pretty clear idea of when I was done, you know. It, when it kind of starts to look like a fruit basket, when all the lines are filled in, there's nowhere left on the page to draw, I would go, all right, I'm finished. And, you know, I get a generous B minus. But when you're <laughs> when, when you're painting like you do and there's so many layers and, and it's not a clear cut image, I, mm. I, I was wondering wh- what's your end point you just get a feeling like something's just like last stroke you're, this is it do you give yourself a time limit how, how do you how do you know that this is this is it this is the final product yeah you just you just know Zach. it's hard it's hard to it's hard to describe it's kind of like like with the commissions and that i do i do normally set myself a time just because if the commissions build up it, it it's high pressure like so i don't like to I don't like to take too many of them on at the one time because they, they could take a month. So I would normally just say, yeah, it'll be two, three or four weeks. But like, yeah, if it's just me having the crack up here, it could take, it could take 10 minutes, two weeks. It just depends. It depends on what you, your, what your, the, the, what you think, what you think you want to get out there. It's, it's not going to be that. It'll, it'll, that's, that's just the way it's going to be until, the painting starts looking the way it's supposed to look. You'll know. You just know. Like it's it's so hard to describe. Like, oh, I just there's paintings there that like you would laugh. I and I've sold paintings that like honest to God that took me minutes, and I was like, what the fuck? What did you see yeah. last? You lunatic! Why did you yeah. know? But that's just the way it is. I like, can't. It's it's very hard to describe that. And then like of course you can't recreate. I like, try to recreate that. But it's it doesn't work. Because but that's that, that that's that th- that's the thing though. When people are paying you for your paintings, they're not paying you for your time. They're paying you for the value. They're paying you for the expression. So if someone yeah. likes an expression that took you ten minutes, and they're willing to pay you five hundred a thousand bucks, and in the back of your head you're like, "This is the quickest thousand bucks ever made." Yeah. To them, it, to to the, to them, it's not a concern. To them, they just want to oh. they want to they want to hang it up in their studio. Or their house, and because it, it makes them feel good. But to you, you know, I, I think about this a lot in podcasting too, on the production side, because 
there's a, there are a lot of people that want to start podcasts and it takes them a lot of time to produce. It, it takes you time to think of ideas. It takes you time to think of topics. And at the beginning, it mm. took me a lot of time. Yeah. But when people, when people pay a professional, they're not necessarily paying them by time. They're paying them to deliver value. And a lot of times when you're really good at what you do and you've done thousands of repetitions, that thing might take you 10 minutes, whereas it would take someone else 10 hours. And so they're paying you for the, for the value that you can deliver and the time that you can save them. Yeah, that's spot on. Yeah, you're spot on there. There's something that I didn't know, though. Like, it's, that's why I, that's why I struggled with it. I didn't understand it and tried to recreate it because I didn't know that. Because, again, I was so new to it. Uh, I didn't know, I didn't know that that's what people were buying into, yeah. you know, especially, like, they would say, like, I seen you make the video about that. Will you make one similar, do the same thing or whatever? And I'd be just like, what the fuck? I didn't understand it. But like, because, yeah, because yeah, I used to feel really guilty about all that because I was like, shit, that only took, I'd be talking to my father and I'd be like, that only took me 10 fucking minutes and she wants to buy it. What is, what, what do I do with this? You know, I think be like, but, but, but you're putting, you're putting, it's not just the time he was saying. He was like, yeah. you were, I seen you, you were jumping around that and you jumped into it. And you were having fun, and you portrayed that really well in the video or on a, in a caption. That's why you, they're, they're buying into that, and they obviously like the colors. You know, that's the bonus. When they want, when they when they want to buy it, that's obviously the the, the bonus of all of it. But like, it's something that I I struggled with really at the start. I just didn't get. But yeah. I understand now because they fucking take it. <laughs> I, I, I had a I, I had a I had a music artist on the podcast a, a couple years ago, and he was telling me about this story that goes around in the music industry and it's a conversation between Jack White and Chris Rock and you know obviously yeah. Chris Rock's a comedian Jack White's a, a super famous uh, musician mm. and supposedly they were both at a party and Jack White is going on about you know how how much he labors in the studio and he tortures himself and he he doesn't sleep and you know he's he's bleeding and sweating and all this shit that goes into it and he's telling and he and he's telling Chris Rock and he's telling him you know how you know he's basically Jesus carrying a cross on his back to get to the finish yeah. line of a song and supposedly Chris Rock just goes to him and says no one cares. No, like no one gives a fuck. <laughs> like, yeah. like they, like the listener doesn't care how long it takes. They just want to hear a good song. So whether it takes you 10 minutes or 10 weeks, if a song's good, that's all people care about. So yeah. same, same thing applies to painting and same thing applies to you. You know, if someone thinks that what you do is good and they're willing to pay for it, that's really the only thing that matters. And You'll have yeah. really you you'll probably have really good paintings that take you ten minutes, and you might have paintings that take you ten days, and you don't like it as much as the painting that takes you ten minutes. So, yeah, to, I wouldn't feel guilty about it. I you know, and especially th that woman who you sold it to took you ten minutes, but it might take her ten years to figure out how to do that. So you're think about yeah. like you're, you're you're paying her. She probably didn't pay you enough because she's paying you to save her 10 years from having to make it herself. So that's yeah. like people are paying you all of, for all of your experience that goes into it leading up to the point where you can make a piece of mm -hmm. art like that in 10 minutes. So I, I yeah. would not feel guilty about that at all. Ah, no, no. It's, it's, it's something I do a lot of work on, you know, to kind of keep on top of that because it's you can't you can't be living with that, like, you know, especially in what I do. But yeah. it's funny with that with the woman that bought that, she was like she's in constant communication. She has a couple of other pieces, but she's like that piece is the one thing that like where she put it in her house, she put it at the entrance hall, like near the where they hang the coats. So everybody that comes oh, into yeah. the house, yeah, everyone that comes in goes, What is that? How did he make that or he she make that or whatever? And she's like, I don't know how he did it. <laughs> and then yeah. like, I just can't remember. <laughs> but that's the beauty about it, because if you were to ask me well, every painting I've ever done commission wise, if you were to ask me to do them again, I wouldn't have a fucking clue how to start any of them. Mm -hmm. it, it would just be it would just be just get the colours again and just, just start the style. It's 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 that's yeah. the way it is, like it's hilarious. 
so it's so a great place to so, go paint and do. Yeah. So I I wanted to get into your 20s because I was reading an artist bio on the emerging artist platform. It looked like you had a page on there where you oh, yeah. you have all your paintings. And I wanted to read a portion of the bio and get into it because because I, I see a lot of I see a lot of similar things in my own journey. So it says Kieran spent a portion of his 20s searching for fulfillment externally. And when it wasn't to be found, he resorted to mind altering chemical substances as a means of escape. But he always found meaning and fulfillment in artistic expression, be it through music or stand up comedy or through his exploits on canvas. He now believes there is no high comparable to that of satisfying your curiosities. And again, that's from the, the emerging artist bio. If yeah. you guys want to go check it out, um, but uh, could you could you talk to me about that period in your twenties specifically and what it was like from day to day with drugs or whatever, or yeah. um, just like not feeling fulfilled, and what what that period in your life was like. Oh, sure. Was, I didn't want to be alive, basically. That is the 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 kind of, you know, the clinker and all of it. I didn't want... There was a couple of twice where I told my father, well, once my father and once my parents, that I wanted to be dead. I don't want to be alive because it was just... I just, I don't know. Like, I was lucky I was around good lads when I was in that scene because they looked out for me, but... And we all looked out for each other, but fuck me like it was misery pure misery i didn't have any money i didn't have any fulfillment i didn't do i didn't know what any of that was i knew somewhere in me that like you should be doing you're supposed to be doing something here you're not supposed to be uh paying rent and going to play on a sports team in the evening and going to work that shouldn't and going to your girlfriend to eat dinner with her that's not that's not what life is like or what my life is. That's not supposed to be like that. You know? And then I, I got, well, like I kind of, I suppose I didn't. The whole kind of drug thing and drink kind of in excess kicked off me because I, I had a real fucking harrowing traumatic experience with my mother when I was in college. She tried to kill herself and I was the only mm. one in the house at the time. So that kicked off all the kind of wanting to experiment with drink heavy and drugs because i was fucking in a bad way after that experience Jeez. mentally yeah did, so how that, did you that, how did you stop her from from killing herself or what well, like what, she, what happened well she didn't do it right she fucking tried to od uh on her so she had like bipolar or a lot of mental health issues mm. and got a, got a very heavy uh prescription and fucking downed it all in one and left a note on the bed Jeez. and fucking but it didn't work. It didn't, obviously, it didn't, it didn't pay or, but so she was up. When she woke up, I was doing my, like, finally her thesis in the room beside her. I, cause I didn't live with her. I was, I, I lived in a, in a different city, but I was home this week, the Halloween week on a midterm. So I was working away in my, in my old bedroom, say, and I could hear her falling out of bed. And mm. that's, that's how I kind of came upon her. She was falling down the stairs and I was trying to hold on to her. Brother came home. I ringing out. He he came home. He seen me, like basically holding her, fucking underneath my arms. And he was like, "Fuck!" And I said, "Ringing out is quick." So that was that was the start of that. Um. So mm. after that, then I I went down the dark path. Then after that, drink. Well, it started out with food, and I got really fat and fucking overweight. And then obviously I was in college in the middle of college here. Start drinking, and then when I came out of college. Then start dipping into a, bit, a few drugs and fucking that was the end of it. Then after that, as soon as I fucking dropped that uh, ecstasy, well, mo say Molly, that was game over for me. I was like, fuck me, because then the dr drink and alcohol is grand. It might numb something, but like, there's always something there with drink. You're, you're not really you could you could be blackout drunk and completely out of it, but with drugs, mm. everything gets fucking elevated, like cocaine mm. and MDMA. It all gets heightened, and then I was like, "Grant, this is this is I'm getting a buzz off this." There's no thoughts about my mother. There's no thoughts about my weight or any shit that I have going on in my life. A girlfriend that I didn't want to be with at the time, fucking you know, job that I wasn't happy in or whatever. 
that was all numb when I was taking drugs. So I was like, "Grah, let's fucking do this." <laughs> um, yeah. so, so that was that. That was that was my. But it was only for. It wasn't long. Like it was only for probably. I'd say deep, deep four years, maybe four, four and a half years, and then kind of coming over, trying to understand it all, and then. Uh, yeah, so that was that. It was just misery, misery for four years. Just and then, of course, being so being so bad, no money, not telling anyone either. Zach, like, I was keeping it all close to my chest. Nobody knew, bad lads I was doing it with. So like, I would, I would go, like it was just so bad. I couldn't tell anyone. I never had any money. Like, oh, mm. it was fucking crazy. When I when I think about it now, I want that now. I was like, what the fuck are you doing, you idiot? And especially. Like I, because it's rampant over here in Ireland at the minute. That there's there's drugs around every street corner, and I'm looking mm. at these young lads. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you like, hop on. I'd love to just take them up and shake them because what the potential, like the potential in people, and they fucking go and ruin it with drugs. Because I, my life was ruined for, and it was almost completely ruined. You know, it was almost wanting to top mm. myself. You know, so yeah. like, you, you, it's just you know, it, oh, it was just misery. It, when, I, when I think about it now. It just, it, I, I can't even believe that I was so low, you know, but that's just the way it was. That's what I did. That's what I can do because they're so fucking good, you know, cocaine oh, and yeah. MMA. And, and if you get a good, pure batch of, or a good batch of um, ecstasy or pills, sure, like it's the best fucking night of your life. That's the, that's the mm. problem. That's the problem. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, you're, and you're constantly chasing that. You can never, you can't keep chasing it because you never want to get it back. And of course, money. Yeah, I've. Everything. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, you know, I've, I've rolled a few times. Once the most recent time at Lollapalooza, what I, the festival I mentioned back in 2017, and yeah. you know, for whatever reason, I didn't get addicted to it. You know, I've, I've done many substances, but you know, whether it's genetics or upbringing, whatever, you know, it different substances hook into different people and i i was never taking molly consistently but when i did do it oh my god like it's so fucking warm and euphoric (laughs) and like you said it's the best fucking night of your life everything feels good you want to dance there's no social pressure the on the come up all the anxiety goes away it just you you hit this fucking warm electric peak and then as soon as you know it, you start to fucking come down. And then I had such bad anxiety the the few days after it. I, I remember, you know, for me, that was a big reason why I, I didn't do it more because I I didn't want to feel the come down again. I, I was yeah. such a low, I was in such a low place. And I was also going through some, some personal issues, relationship issues also at the time, which did not make things better. But you know, even if I didn't have that, even if it was just the drugs, the, you know, it's, it's so, it's so powerful. And I wish, I wish there was a way where you could turn on the high and then just get back to normal and not go to the lows. That would be amazing. Like if you, if you could just use all that serotonin and, uh, chemically alter your brain i remember thinking that i'm lying in bed and it's the day after you know i'm drinking a couple beers because i'm trying to get back to a a level of normal and i'm thinking you know like why why do drugs have to be like this why can't i just take a drug that makes me feel as intense as intensely good as that but then just feel normal after but you Mm. know that's not the uh, the universe we live in. Maybe there's a normal no. universe. Where, maybe there's a universe out there where there's no come downs. Um, and if there's a universe like that, I would definitely like to try it out for a little bit. But while we're in this yeah. world, it's it's such a strong hook to be on a drug like that. Because like you said, it's not just like being drunk. It's like being drunk on steroids for six hours straight after after only taking one pill because you you have to go you have you have to keep going back and back to get more drinks you got to go to the bar like this and that it's like if you get one pill like you're good for an entire night so it's so easy and it and it lasts for so long yeah it's a lot more it's a lot more efficient that's that was why i loved it as well because you could be in a big group of boys there down down at a gig or, or the back of a rave and you could have that little, well, this was my move, the little, do you know the little jean pocket that's on the front of the... Oh, yeah. 
of the pockets. I used to have them just, I'd have all the Skittles in that or a little, little bag of Coke and just bang, bang. I never, you know, don't, the only time I went to go to the bar was to get a pint of water because <laughs> they were going yeah. crazy that much, you know, but that's, yeah, if that's the thing, yeah, yeah. the efficiency of them, they're so easy to get, they're relative, well, they're not, they're cheap if you do it from, like one night out, but like, you know, if you get deep into it, it's not cheap, they're fucking really expensive. Yeah. But like, you know, that, but that's the thing, it's so easy now, it's fucking, it's criminal, but Ah, sure, look, yeah. that's the thing, isn't it? It's unreal. They were, and you know what, Zach? I'll tell you this: they were some of the best fucking years of my life, as well as miserable. Like I've a lot of yeah. fucking great, I've a lot of great memories. But that's the thing: the great memories come with the fucking depression and the anxiety and the suicidal ideology. Yeah, that 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 comes too. So you can't have you can't have a fucking boat. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, and, that's and I. I feel I feel the same way because th- those nights were fun as hell. So I d- I don't want to take away from that. Like there is no, there is a re- there there is a reason why people do drugs, and there's there's a difference between choosing to use drugs on a, a special occasion or becoming addicted to them. And you know, ad- there's a lot of things about addiction that we don't understand, and I don't. Mm think we treat addicts as well as we should in society we, we treat it like it's a deliberate choice this person is making every day to wake up and do a drug and, and there are a lot of things that were outside of this person's control with genetics and environmental yeah. upbringing and things like that but th- there are there are i'll say better ways to do drugs and yeah. that's part of that's part of becoming an adult for me is learning you know, when you are going to use a substance to enhance your night, know the limit and know how to space it out and yeah. don't do it. Don't do it in a way where you're going to become reliant on it. You should be able yes. to have fun without those drugs. But if you use them well, you can enhance that experience. And yeah. there's a there's a huge there's a huge spectrum of drug use. It's not just it's terrible for you. Or it's the most amazing oh, night of your cool. life. There, yeah, there's there's yeah. a there's a whole thing in between. So I, so I'm a big believer in like once you're an adult, you know, 18, 21, whatever, and y- you make your own decisions, you figure it out. That's part of life. And there's much yeah. more information out there nowadays. Um, and at the same time, at the same time, there are chemical and emotional consequences and physical consequences that we should be made aware of at a much younger age. We shouldn't just yeah. be told, we shouldn't just be told across the board, all drugs are bad. I remember a lady came into our school in eighth grade and showed us a video of people ODing on drugs. And then we had to sign a banner saying, we're never going to drink or do drugs in our life, yeah. like that dare banner. And no one ever told us what drugs do to you, what to expect, you know, should you test your drugs? What an overdose yeah. looks like? Symptoms? You know, you should know these things. Even if you don't do drugs, you have friends who may do drugs, and you need to know the signs of when something's bad happen, when something bad is happening. And at least in America, we don't get any education like that. It's either, you know, some someone's like, oh yeah, dr-. no, no one says drugs are great in, in education. It's always like it's the worst thing. You do it once, your life goes down the drain, and then as you become older you see all these amazing people that have also experimented with drugs and it's like, oh, you can you can be a human being and also experiment with drugs. It doesn't make you yeah. this horrible person. Your life doesn't just immediately go down the toilet after one night. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Actually, look, that's what it's all about control, isn't it? Trying to figure out a balance. For sure, look, there yeah. was none, there was none, I, I was never given any of that education. And like, there's... You know, there's a, there's a touch of alcoholism on the father's side, so that's probably what I was tapping into there when I hit the ground running early. I was like, fuck, I'm going to hop off this now because, you know, it was probably in me. I don't know. You know, I didn't grow up around it, but, you know, it was definitely in the blood. So, you know, it was bound to happen that one night turned into four years of fucking, you know, ruin. So at least it was four years of not fucking, you know, not a coffin. So, because I, yeah. I know lads, like I know lads, I like coach lads, like teenagers and they were they wanted to kill themselves because of all this shit that was going on around them, mm. the stress and all that their friends fucking addicted and in with gangs and it's fuck, it's, it's, it's everywhere it's not just fucking yeah. Brooklyn it's the back arse of fucking leash here in Ireland as well it's I'm sure anyway look that's a different thing it's a different conversation yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so so 
for that period in your life, were you, was it an every night thing? Were you going out hard? Was it three, four nights a week? Like what, what was your routine like? It was probably two, two nights. The odd, the odd time it was three, but normally two nights a weekend, Friday and Saturday. Yeah. yeah. And like I playing rugby there as well, like Friday and Sunday mornings, and I would go out after training and fucking get on it, and then maybe play a match on Sunday. And yeah. fucking the eyes, the eyes would be in the back of my head. Like I'd be looking at the ground and everything, trying to cover it up. And yeah. Oh, will you stop? I don't know how. You know. And then a lot. Every festival I went to was fucking a whole three, four days of solid, solid uh, drug taking. And, so uh, yeah. So. So was there, was there a, what do you call it? Like the the bottom floor moment there, there's a term for it like you're uh yeah come to jesus meeting yeah come yeah that's a good good way to put it come, like what what was that moment where you're like fuck if i don't change something you know terrible is gonna happen uh yeah definitely rock bottom one, rock bottom moment yeah rock bottom yeah there was a couple of both like like what having the conversation with the parents about fucking wanting to talk myself was tough. I cried like a fucking week. But that that wasn't that was just the kind of a that was probably the end of it. That was that was probably the, the wall was built then to not to never go back. Um after that. But like the, the definitely the the rock bottom was fucking I played a rugby match after a game. This is fucking unreal to say this, but um I played a rugby game on a Sunday after a heavy, fucking heavy, heavy mm-hmm. set. And um, it was a really abnormally hot day here in Ireland and on the, on the mm-hmm. day of the game. Played the match um, and that was kind of what I, I, was in, I was in bits. I shouldn't have played it. And I was walking home with one of my friends and I, I just felt my muscles were like spasming. Like everything was just twitching on me. And um, I, I, I couldn't talk. I couldn't speak tell my friend what was wrong I was just losing speech and he kind of carried me to my gate he, he brought kind of just had me had my arm like I could I could still walk but everything was I was losing control of everything yeah everything and, uh, was just shut down basically speech yeah. muscles yeah everything was and I was I was cold as well I remember feeling really cold and he walked on he lived a couple of doors down to me so he walked on and I, I walked to my gate just said I, I was like I'm alright now I'm going to gather myself and uh, my girlfriend at the time was in in bed, like asleep. This is at about 10, 10 p.m. Mm. And I took one step up up the step to my door, and I fell completely knocked out. Fell head first onto the concrete paving, Jeez. and my whole body was just spasming. And my girlfriend at the time heard the thump of me hit the ground, and ran out bawling, crying, like, "What the fuck is happening here?" And I just remember waking up then, and my dad was there. And an ambulance was reversing into the into the driveway, and I was like, I was just freezing, like, and my dad was kind of had me sit up, and he was just like, back in the ambulance, saying, yeah, he's here, he's here, he's here, and I can remember like the driver was like, is he okay? What's wrong? And fucking they ran out, and uh, like they told me like that, so they went in with, with my girlfriend. One of them went in with my girlfriend and my dad, and they put me on a sitting up on a stretcher. And like the lights were going, like my my landlord lived next door. He poked his head out the window. Like everyone was, it was fucking crazy that day. Like, and I was just freezing, shivering, like in the ambulance, in the back of the ambulance. And mm. he was like, "We're gonna have, to, we're gonna have to bring you to the hospital." And you know, what did you take? What's wrong with you? And I said, I didn't take anything. I just I played rugby match today, and there's nothing wrong with me. And he was like, he was like, "Don't fucking bullshit me here. What the fuck is going on?" What did you take? And I said I had a heavy one last night. <laughs> and he was like, he was like, because that's why the other obviously this is procedure. He they knew what was going on. The woman brought my dad and my girlfriend in because they obviously didn't want them to hear what fucking was what he was about to say. So uh, he said, look, a cocktail of fucking cocaine, MDMA, fucking ecstasy, you know, whatever, whatever I get my hands on. I poked my nose and put down my throat, and he was like. You're fucking. You're in. You're lucky to be alive here, late. You know, blah blah blah. And I was like, but sure, you know, I played a rugby match today. I'm grand. There's nothing wrong with me. And he was like, you're not. Yeah. Like, you didn't get any. He was like, you probably didn't get any sleep. You're probably severely dehydrated. Whatever you took last yeah. night, because you didn't sleep and rest and drink enough, it's still in you. And it just fucking had some sort of relapse or something. I don't know what it was, but he, anyway, I begged, I begged and begged. I said, please don't bring me to the hospital because 
I can't let anyone find out about this. <laughs> I think yeah. I tried to make up things in my head. What am I tell them that I have fucking, you know, a concussion? I was like, I'll tell them I got concussed in the match. You know, that's what I was trying to, you know, I was going to lie to my teeth. Um, but he basically just put me on a, like an IV in the, in the back of the ambulance. And um, they gave me all these sashes and stuff. And I was just down in all this water. And I sat there for about two hours talking to this guy. And I just crumbled. I was crying and everything. And then my dad came out and they were like, he's okay, he's okay, he's just dehydrated, he's, he's grand, there's not a bother on. But your man hit me, the the the, uh, the paramedic hit me a shoulder and he said, don't, you can't do that again, you're fucking lucky just to be here. So yeah. I was thinking, Jesus, <laughs> that should be the end of that now. <laughs> but it that's, wasn't. That's, it, it that's wasn't wild. That. I kept going though, I, that wasn't the end of it. Like I kept, I kept going for another... I'd say probably a year and a bit. That was in 2015. I think that happened. Yeah. That was 2015. So I kept going. Now I didn't do the fucking grab my hands or get get my hands on everything and take it. I didn't do that again. But I still fucking went at it. I still got after it like a couple of times. So it, like that that was that was the come to Jesus meeting, but it, mm. it wasn't the end of it. But but the end of it was coming slowly because I was I was slowly stopping the, the heavy session and then the thoughts of the stuff that I start, I wanted to do, like travel the world and do instruments, that started to come forward then. The, the less yeah. and less I went out and took drugs, the more and more that was coming up, what I was supposed to be doing in my life started coming. But that's when I got that's when I got really depressed because I was like, well, I'm not doing anything here. What am I at? I have to start doing this. And then I was like, well, you're not fucking going to do it. You're, you're not like, I was really negative and, like really anxious about about like quitting because I was with a girlfriend there, long term girlfriend. You know, I was in the middle of because I, I thought I was big dick. I'm going to go get a big job there, big corporate job in London, and I got that because there was more money, and I was like, grand, I get more money, and I'll have a fucking house. I'll be able to do more drugs and drink, and I'll, I'll, it'll be great, and and nobody will be the wiser. And when I got that, that made it all worse, and then I got worse because. What I thought I wanted, I got made me miserable. So it all just spiraled then. So like, even though I, yeah. was, I, I was cleaning up my act, but I was fucking still depressed and miserable. I still had a lot of work to do. Like, so, so that was the that was the kind of wanting to, wanting to fucking kill myself. That was all that kind of um, yeah. what would I say? It, that time in my life was when I was coming off the drugs. I was still, you know, you're not you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Like, so fucking, you know, well, why are you here? Kind of thing. Did that was in my head every day for for a good a good two years. I'd say. Did you right. so, so did did you did you stop cold turkey? Did you slow down? What was like? How did you get yourself off of going hard twice a week? Because mm. you know, I I never I never had a moment like that where my body completely shut down. But yeah. I've gone out, you know, hard two three nights a week in in school, mixing that with drinking stimulants drugs whatever and then going to festivals and there's like a there, it's very hard to just stop completely and just be like yeah. i'm you know i'm giving this up like was it cold turkey was it like you just slowed down a little bit how did that happen yeah it was it was more of a slow kind of drawn out process i kind of just stopped i didn't i didn't want to be around a lot of the lads that i was running with and because i was a lot of it was sleazy a lot of the places we were raving and that were really sleazy and fucking I was like oh, I'm, I'm kind of done with this and then yeah and then it just it just all kind of slowed down and then I'd say probably 2017 was when it all came to an end I went traveling and that was a good a good way of kind of getting away from it getting away from people and mm. and just and just my my what I thought was my normal life I got away and I was like fuck this now I'm leaving all this and that was the end of it then but I did slip up like I did I went to a festival when I came home from traveling, I went to a festival a couple of months after and I fucking, I had a bad, bad slip up. And I was like, oh my God, is this the way it's going to be now? Am I not able to kick this? Mm. So that, I was I was worried after that um, because I was like, am I not able to, because um, that was the first time I went out and listened to like dance music and music that I loved um, since, since previously. And I fucking, the first opportunity I got, I took drugs and I was like, Jesus. And I had a really bad time after that because I was like, I'm not, I might not mm. want to be able to do this anymore. So like, I, I've been to a few gigs since and I, t and I with my now missus, I was telling her, I was like, this is going to be fucking hard now for me. You know, as soon as you hear that bass or you feel that bass going up through your fucking baby toe to the back of your neck, you'll go, holy fuck, if I had a pill here, yeah. this would be unbelievable. 
So like mm. that, it's that. I don't think that will ever go away. Is that I don't think it, it will, but that's just the way it is. If that's the, if that's the, um, if that's the deal I made now. Tough, so be it. I just have to work on it. But it's, it, it's, yeah. um, it was it was one slip up since twenty seventeen. I was at a festival, and then after that, I was like, no, I barely even drink anymore. I have a couple of pints here and there, but fucking fuck all. I'm too, I'm too active now. I can't afford to be drinking anymore. I can't, I can't do it. Man. Painted yeah. and everything falls aside. Yeah, so, no, that that that's the 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 I, I I'm lucky because I you know I had a very for whatever reason I I was able to slow down after college mm-hmm. and you know there's a, there's a lot of people that get fucked up and they're not able to s- slow down or or maybe they spiral out of control after school or they're drinking and drugs picks up. But there, yeah. there were probably three or four years out of college. It took me four years to realize this. I'm 28 now, so got out of school at 22. So this is, you know, I'm 25, 26. And from 18 to 22 years old, I'm basically a functioning alcoholic. Like I'm, I'm going, yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting fucked up like four nights a week, going really hard two or three nights of those and you know i'm not special a lot of people do it you know a lot of my best friends you know we're all going out we're getting fucked up baseball helps a little bit because we had to perform so that would give us this athletic goal that we had to hit the next day so you know i i i wasn't the heaviest drinker on the team by a long shot but i was still getting after it and then four years out of college i realized you know if i was doing this normally if i was doing this outside of school my friends and my family would think that i had a problem yeah. but because because everyone's in school and everyone's together and it's kind of the college cult it's kind of the culture in america yeah it's it's fine it, it's you can go out on thursday through sunday because that's what everyone is doing and mm. it's a very you know i'm I, again, I'm you know I'm 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 not saying I'm I'm special or anything like that. There are millions of kids that go through college every year and and they party and they go hard and they're they do well in school. They play sports. Yeah. It's just a weird thing to <clears throat> think about when you're looking back on your college years, how hard you went and how accepted that was, and then looking that looking at that behavior against the backdrop of being an adult and being a professional, I, you know, I guess that's why people only do it for four years because yeah. it takes, it takes a wild stamina and a wild body and mind to be able to maintain alcohol and drug use to that level. Cause it's, it's actually insane. Yeah. Also a fucking miserable mind. Like if you're going to be doing it for that long, you're not, you're, you're not happy. There's no way mm. you're not. There's something in you that's fucking not right if you're if you're continuing to do that. Well, that's what I believe. Like it might not be the case, but like there's no way anybody that's doing fucking drugs on the regular is happy. Fucking not fear it. That's why now, like, not I. I mean, like fucking it's not okay and doing all that crap. Like if you take yeah, you take yeah, I, I would say. I would say I I know people who do mushrooms or they smoke of weed course, every day. Of course, of course, it's a different and, thing though. It's a different yeah, yeah. Like the, the harder drugs, like coke, heroin, Molly. If you're doing that on a regular basis, yeah. you know it's very. There are I'm sure there are some people out there who do it and they're functioning and you know maybe they're mm-hmm. an anomaly and they're fine. But for 99 percent of people, you can't really just dabble in those you, you, you no. can't take those drugs consistently and also be a functioning human being emotionally no. and physically no that's my well, that's that that was my experience like you know i was miserable didn't want to be alive fucking didn't want to be uh, all relationships hiding everything lying all the time it, 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 it just eats you up you can't do it it's impossible you know so i suppose like you know it's a different thing when you're wanting to go to fucking watch the irish man in the cinema and you drop a mushroom just to fucking tighten it up a bit. You know, that's a different thing altogether. You know, that's a bit of fun and a bit of crack and that's controlled. But you get something in a bag that's fucking made in a lab, you don't know what's in it. And you're yeah. relying on that on a Friday night to get you through a couple of hours out of this book. Yeah, fuck yeah. that. So, so the, I, I wanted to talk about it a little bit because you just reminded me. I, I listened to a conversation with this guy, Dr. Carl Hart, who he's okay. a 
a professor at Columbia who studies drug use and, and specifically drug use in adults. And mm. he he openly talks about using heroin and cocaine and drinking, smoking weed. And he's a professor at an Ivy League school. And one of the things he talks about is how we don't know what we're getting in yeah. drugs where we're getting it from a dealer, especially it's a drug that's not legal. And he's he has he's a professor, so he has access to the top quality. He's doing pharmaceutical grade cocaine, pharmaceutical grade heroin. He knows how much exactly is in it. He knows the dose. He has a family, he has kids, and he's talking about this openly. And I'm like, you know, I don't ever see myself trying to live in a way like that. And he does it and he seems like a great guy and everyone's different. Yeah. But it, do, it does make you think like if we, if people had access to the best shit, like everything was, pro, everything was uh, quality control and you had dosages, you, you knew there were there were ingredients on the bag like this is what yeah. it's cut with you know this is a serving size warnings like do not take more than this amount don't do it more than this much per week whatever how much yeah. more fulfilling drug use would be for individuals Gosh. if we if we approached it like that as a, as a society and actually gave people some guidance instead of just saying across the board all this shit's terrible for you if you do this you're gonna die yeah. whatever blah blah um, so yeah. he, he, Dr. Carl Hart has definitely changed the way th that I think about drugs. And again, yeah. and again, my, my drug patterns haven't really changed that much since I've listened to him, but it does make me th have thought experiments of, you know, maybe, maybe it's doesn't, it doesn't have to be this way for everyone. People react yeah. to drugs differently. And a lot of it has to do with where it comes from and the quality of the drugs. Yeah, and then where you are when you're taking it as well, because you know, yes, set and setting. Fucking, you're down, you're down the back wall in a fucking rave, and it's four in the morning, and the bass is coming up through your spine. You're going to fucking get whatever you want to lash it up your nose, like you know. Yeah. You know, if you're sitting at you're sitting at home and you're eating a fucking you're eating a Stephen King novel, and you you know you drop a tiny drop of liquid heroin down your gizzard just to elevate that a bit, make it a bit more scary, a bit more real. That's a, it's a, it's a different thing. Sure, who yeah. wouldn't be open to doing that? But yeah. they, again, it's, again, it's a different. We're living in. We're not living in that time yet, though. It's not here yet. It's all yeah. The early days for that, like you know. So we'll see. It's coming though. It's yeah, coming. yeah, yeah. That'd be so, good though. Imagine that liquid heroin with Stephen King. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, uh, or I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I've never done heroin, but one of the things no, that no. he made me think about. Is what if you microdosed heroin, like a drop in your tongue or whatever? Yeah. You, you didn't have to do a needle. What would a microdose of heroin feel like? And yeah. you know, there's no really good source out there to to try it. And you know, if you're listening to this, uh, I'm not saying go out and try heroin. I'm I'm just saying yeah. there are there are many ways in which our drug use is being controlled and manipulated by the mm -hmm. by the society that we live in and yeah. the lack of proper guidance and regulations and the way that we demonize drug users that, that you know in if i hopefully we'll see in the future things start to open up and the conversation becomes more nuanced about drugs that, that's something that dr carl hart makes me look forward to Ah uh, yeah, Jesus, I may I may find out. I've never even heard of him. I may I may research. Yeah, I can uh, I can yeah, send you. I can send you his book. Yeah, yeah he, he's had a couple of podcast conversations. I'll I'll send them to you. Nice. So here's uh here's one thing I wanted to to get into with you. So I'm looking around on Reddit. I'm looking for painting related things, painting related posts on Reddit, and one of the things that came up was about Van Gogh, and mm -hmm. Van Gogh started painting at 27. He made over 2,000 works and he only sold one painting in his lifetime. He made over 2,000 paintings yeah. and only actually sold one of them. But he's considered one of the greatest artists of all time. But he died mentally unwell and unrecognized by his peers and by society. So I wanted to ask you, would you rather be a Van Gogh type figure? Like you're famous after death, but no one 
really gives you any credit while you're alive? Or would you rather be a financially successful artist who's forgotten in a hundred years? Jesus. Jesus, I don't know that. That's a tough... I suppose, look, fucking financially successful. See, what, what do you mean by that, though? What does, what does financially successful mean? You could pay your rent off of painting. That's financially successful. So, like, you're not making millions, but you're you're living a comfortable life. When you go out to dinner, you don't worry about what you're ordering because you're like, I, I got it. Uh, you know, I have the money. That's what I I define as financially successful. You could go out to dinner yeah. with your friends and you're not worried about what you're getting. Mm. Mm. And you pay the rent. Yeah. Jesus. It's hard, like, because in one way, like, you're going to be fucking dead anyway. None of this matters. None of, none of, none of what I'm doing or anybody that buying my pants, none, none of it really matters at the end of the day. So, like, if I can fucking pay my rent and go away with Paula for the weekend and eat out and drink pints and have the crack because based on purely from what I made, you know, I'd be fucking delighted with that. Happy days. Yeah. But then at the same, at the same time, if one, one of my pants is hanging on the wall in 100 years and people are still talking about me like that's that would be crazy right? but sure that 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 that's not a, like it's that's a hard one like it, it's so it's it's hard to com- comprehend that because i think a lot about like i think a lot about death and the countdown time or timer not not like my own death but I, I you I, have I, a I, clock on your wall counting oh, down yeah. to your own death yeah absolutely absolutely because You're like 87,000 days left well it could be one day left yeah that's true so you don't know the clock the clock might not be moving but there's a fucking clock there mm. and like uh, like I don't give a fuck about legacy and all that bullshit I'm here fucking doing this because this is something I wanted to do I wrote this down and it's something that was in me and I'm doing it now and like some people want this shit on the walls, then fucking happy days. If they keep them and they pass it down or they keep it, that then grand. That's my legacy. I give this shit away as well as that. None of this fucking stuff fears for anyone. Like I'm giving these paintings away regularly, you know, online mm. because it doesn't fucking matter. Like it doesn't matter. Somebody else to buy one grand, or is it so off? You know, like it, like I could be killed. Like, as I said, like the clock is there. You don't know when your time is coming. So in a hundred years, if Nobody knows who I am. Nobody's going to know who you are. Maybe not, or anybody really, are they? Mm. We don't know. Like, so I don't live in. I don't live in that world of says, well, what, what legacy am I going to leave? Fuck. Just all I'm worried about is what's going on today. Am I hungry? Am I tired? How am I feeling? How's Paul? Am my family okay? Yeah. Uh, did I did I get to paint today? Did, did I I got to paint grand? Did I have a roof over my head. Fucking happy day. That's all. I you know, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was thinking. I was thinking. I, I was think when I was thinking about it. I th- I think for me, there's no question that I'd rather be a financially successful podcaster oh, yeah. who's you know paying the rent exclusively off podcasting. Hopefully, well respected, but I'm forgotten about. You know, maybe even ten years, twenty years after I die. Mm let alone a hundred years. That would be amazing if people were talking about me a hundred years from now, but I'd rather be a successful, but forgotten podcaster successful during my lifetime and being able to reap the benefits during my lifetime, than be a Van Gogh type figure who's unrecognized, uh, and not financially successful during his life. But then, you know, 200 years later, his paintings are discovered. And now he's one of the best artists in the world because he didn't get to live. He he yeah, he that. has no idea. He's but he's dust. He's 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 a rotting corpse in the ground somewhere. Exactly. Whose his paintings are worth billions of dollars combined, but he didn't get any benefit from that. He doesn't get any recognition. No. He hasn't gotten to it, make any speeches. No one's come up to him in the street except for that one guy or girl who bought his painting. It's like, hey, I love that painting. Like no one's, no one has been able to tell him how good he is or how much his his paintings mean to them. And I'd much rather yeah. be able to have those conversations with people while I'm alive and be able to pay the bills with my, my work while I'm alive. Absolutely. Then, you know, cause nothing matters once you're dead that the, you, you, 
no one gives a fuck. Like, sure, money oh. might go to my family, which would be great, but I don't give a shit what happens because I'm dead, and then no one else does. And <laughs> that's basically it. Like, nothing, there's no, I, th- I think the people get it wrong when they try to ascribe meaning to death, but, but death is essentially meaningless. The only thing that matters is the meaning you have while you're alive and the meaning you create yeah. when you're alive. Cause, cause once you're dead, everything's over for Absolutely, you. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty simple as that. Like it's fucking, and I, I, I have those conversations with like fucking all the time with people. And like, sometimes they're not ready to hear it, but like, I was only, I was only chatting to a few people. I won't say who, but people, I was at a session on Saturday night, music and like I was just saying like oh blah he should do this he should do that blah 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 and I said he fucking better hurry up because he's fucking dying he's not fucking he's not he's not getting younger like mm. he's getting fucking older now is the time to do you know yeah, yeah a few people might remember him around the town for being a good musician but he's fucking you know that doesn't matter a shite now when he's here and he's alive fucking you know he should be you know that now is the time, like you know, ah, oh, it wrecks me head, and it wrecks me head as well when you get that reaction of, oh Jesus, you're, you know, you're so morbid, and I'm like, it's the fucking truth. What do you want to do? What, like, what, I, I say it to my parents, like, fucking, why, what, like, you have, if you're sixty, you have thirty years left if you're lucky, twenty five, twenty. Mm-hmm. Fucking hurry up, yeah. like, hurry up, yeah. Oh, like Jesus Christ, what? Like I'm in my thirties, I'm like, how much more fucking. I can't give my painting the energy I have now in, say, fucking 40 years' time. It's not going to be able. So now yeah. is the time to do it this way. And if fucking people want to uh, commission me or a uh, fucking a company want to work with me, I'm going to go, fucking hell yes, because I'll be dead. You know? Yeah. And you might, you might get a hand of me painting anyway, and I might see nobody or fucking no... And I might get no crack out of it. So fucking yeah. say yes to everything. Fucking hurry up. I d- like. So I, did, I just looked it up. I'm 28 years old. Let's say I live for 60 more years, which would be pretty good. That's 88. That's above average for a guy. That means 60 more years. I have 21,900 days left. Yeah. Which when you, it sounds, it, when you see that number in front of you, it yeah. doesn't look like a lot. Like 21,000, I can count to 21,000 and I have 21,900 of those. And so part of me thinks that... I would live my life in a more fulfilling way if I actually did have some sort of clock on the wall yeah. where I woke where yeah. I woke up and tomorrow it said 21,899 because I'm like, oh fuck, like there's yeah. eventually this this eventually this is gonna get down to like 14. And I'm gonna be <laughs> like, holy shit, like where did my life go? Yeah, I'm telling you, it's a great practice. It's something that I implemented a long, long time ago, and I was like, fuck, this is powerful. Just put it up there. It doesn't have to be a physical clock. It can be a mental one. Just somewhere, even when you look at a normal clock in your day-to-day life, if there's a clock somewhere, you go, oh, Jesus, did I do, fuck, am I, am I doing it here? Or what's the story? Because you can go worse than 20,000 days or whatever you said there, Zach. Fucking 60 summers you have left. 60 Thanksgiving dinners. 60 yeah. fucking cri- Christmas phone calls to your, you don't even yeah. have 60 Christmas, you know. How many more uh, conversations with your parents or your sibling? You know, how, where do you want to go with it? So, like, to, 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 to start realizing, fuck, I only have 60 more months of July on planet Earth here. I better start enjoying my Julys and my Junes and my Augusts, my summers, because I don't have many left, you know? And worse, yeah. when, you're, when you're younger, you don't know when it's coming. When you're older, you're like, well, I'm coming to the time now because you're not doing spontaneous shit or traveling or shit that I like doing like jumping off cliffs and into mm. the sea you're not doing that when you're older but hey, like, when you're doing it now you're like fuck I might not have any more of these left, so I better go and do this you could you could you could be though if you keep your body in shape you could be 70 75 jumping off cliffs oh, at least yeah, I well, hope I can do also. that yeah yeah I yeah. hope so Jesus yeah yeah well that's the thing well that's the beauty about living in this age as well that we can live longer and we've more information to you know help us for so yeah. so y- you said that thinking about death is something that you've practiced for a while. What does that look like? like how do you meditate on death? Do you you if, have a reminder? Does something pop up in your phone? Like what's what what's the way that you practice that? It's it's very simple. It's just it's very kind of it's it's more of a kind of a grounding like 
if I haven't done something in a day that if I haven't laughed or if I haven't, you know, if my state hasn't been heightened or if I haven't done something, if I haven't learned something or if I haven't painted or if I didn't do any exercise, if if there's something that I didn't do at the end of the day, I'll be like, you better do that tomorrow because you're not, there's going to be a time now when you're not going to be able to do this ever. So Mm. fucking do it tomorrow and do more of it. So if it's, if if I haven't laughed, I'll fucking go and watch Mark Norman or whoever makes me laugh or I'll do something like me and my missus there are always laughing or we'll do something silly or I'll do something silly myself like last night for example right so I was driving over the rugby train I'm still playing rugby like in the mm. midst of all this fucking chaos as well like, I don't know how I'm still playing but anyway it's probably going to be me last year maybe maybe a couple more years but like I'm not I'm not like I'm about I'm a good drive away from the rugby club so like I was driving the train and, and I was like fuck I didn't do anything I didn't laugh enough today. Like I'm not. I'm not. I didn't. I didn't get get giddy. Like I didn't have enough crack today. So I turned on a ch- a song on my playlist that I know I fucking go crazy to, and I turned up full blast in my car, and I was banging the banging the steering wheel. I just going oh, I'm clapping along to it and screaming, and then I just started laughing because it was outrageous. Like it was just hilarious. I was bombing up the motorway going channel. And I was like, fuck, I don't want to go training here or whatever, blah. but that got me going and I started laughing and I was like, oh, I'm gone now, I'm ready to rock and that, I'm good because yeah. you don't get you don't get many of them moments like, you know, where you can just be crazy on your own and like, you know, thinking about not being able to do that ever again will really get you to kick it the gear, you know, so that's what I do. Yeah. And that's what I did that's, last night, so yeah. That's something I'll think about before I record a podcast is that I don't know how many more of these I have left because I could get, yeah. you know, walk, get get hit by a, an Uber driver tomorrow or in, in the city or more likely get run over by a motorized bike. But, Absolutely. you know, <laughs> you don't, yeah. I, when I record a conversation, you never know how many conversations you have left. You have an idea of it in your head. If I'm doing this, you know, let's say 30, 40 more years doing once a week, I could come mm-hmm. up with a number, but this one or three weeks from now or three years from now, that could be the last one. And you never yeah. know. So I try I try to remind myself of that throughout the week, just literally a split second. Like this could be it. Enjoy this. Yeah. This is this is a celebration because you never know what's gonna happen to you. Yeah, yeah. And I make it good. And also fucking that's why it's so important for me. Like not not for like for me or you, but for anybody to do anything creative and put it out into the world, that's why it's fucking important because that's you leave that's you leaving your mark then. If you don't have kids or you don't have anything like that, or you know, there's there's you're the last in your line or whatever. If you do something creative and you put it out into the world, that's you living on then, you know. And then maybe that might be your legacy. And you can fucking your with your podcast or my art sales or whatever, we can we can die happy knowing that, well, that paid my rent, but it's still fucking there as well. It's, it's it lives on, you know. That's that's why, that's why uh, that's why Mark Norman does seventeen podcasts a week because exactly. he he tell he tells himself this could be it, this could be the last yeah. one. For sure, it's 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 fucking bad. It's a full. He's like, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do a podcast with this random kid who hit me up on Instagram because you know this could be the last one I ever do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but sure, look, he's dead right, and didn't it work? We all we we all know him. We're, we're we live in different worlds, but that's yeah. why we know him because he fucking yeah. out his way to help everyone. You know, maybe that's yeah. even his mark. So, so, uh, so speaking of doing big things before you die, you have you have billionaires like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and they're they're currently competing to make commercial space flight publicly available, where the average person could afford to go to space. So, I, I wanted to ask you. Would you be interested in getting launched into space to paint in zero gravity? And knowing what you know about painting in an environment with gravity, what do you think it would be like to paint in zero G? Uh, do I have my clothes on? <laughs> do you have your clothes uh, on? Yeah. Uh, clothing optional. <laughs> clothing optional. Uh, well, then no. <laughs> it's just you. It's just you, Jeff Bezos, and Elon Musk floating in a pod with no clothes on oh, and some well, paint. Spoken, if, if they're with me, I'm definitely keeping my clothes on. God knows what them are up to. Yeah. Uh, Oh yeah, sure. Who wouldn't want to do that? Quite of course. That would be some crack. Imagine, imagine the like, 
like even just to send your your mother the picture, and I I would tell nobody. I would tell nobody, and then I would go up and do it, make a pain or do whatever. But I would take a quick snap of me up there, send it to my mother on WhatsApp or my father. Go <laughs> fucking to say, oh, I'm here today. <laughs> oh, yeah, just, that was, that'd be hilarious. But sure, of course, anyone would want to do any anything that like that. But like, I think it's I think what they're doing is a bit fucking slimy, and it's so. It's so irrelevant what they're doing. Like, the, who needs to be going up to space and exploring all around them and whatever? Like, will you fucking get? I just think it's so. It doesn't make any. It that that doesn't that type of thing doesn't get me going at all. But if they tell me a text about here, you want to put a new paint, and I'll be like, oh yeah, <laughs> of course, I sure be there. Hundred percent. What? So, what do you think it would be like to paint in zero gravity? Would you just would you just throw it at the canvas? I don't even know if you could pay, no, put no, paint no. on I a paintbrush. I would I would get a small maybe one of these ones you know the the small tubes and I would um I would probably just hit them and you know when it when paint splats out in like small little splats and bubbles yeah. I would let that I would let that flow all over me in in multicolors so I would have probably I don't know five or six of them and uh, just explode them all over the the space station or whatever and then I would grab a canvas and just flow everywhere and just try and catch. Just yeah, try and catch anything, and then if I did yeah. catch it, then I would I would move my hand around it or whatever tool I brought with me. And yeah, so that's crazy. Just, it, it would it would yeah it'd literally <laughs> be that. like you're not even you're not painting with a brush. You're just you're you're exploding the paint in midair and then just catching it like a glove. You're just carrying the canvas yeah. around the space station, being like whoop whoop whoop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I well, that's what I think I would do. That's in my head anyway. Just yeah. Yeah. So, so who uh. It, who's another painter that inspires you? Is is there someone you look to, uh, some work of art, you know, even if it's outside of painting, and another artist that you consistently visit for inspiration, whether it's painting or music, writing, uh, someone that inspires you creatively? Well, my father, anyway, he's unbelievable. He's a real musician and fucking, he's always... Anytime anybody asks me that, I always say him. Your father? Yeah, he's a real musician. Um, what does he play? So he, uh, he plays all all, in, all all the instruments. Yeah, all a lot of tr- traditional Irish instruments like uh, bazooki and he has a twelve string uh, guitar and mandolin, but all very rare types of them. So he's he's constant source of inspiration. Even that, that's where I was on Saturday night. He was playing a gig. And he was rusty, like, but he was still the best player there, you know, even even with years of rust. So he'd be up there. Um, and then in terms of the art, not not really. Like, I have crack online with, with memes, with art memes, but like with Jackson Pollock and Basquiat and Dali and uh, Picasso, but none of them. No, I don't really get going. Like, I, I, I'm drawn to the, I'm drawn to the abstract expressionists, like, you know, mm-hmm. Uh, Jaxie there and a lot of the earlier boys like um, Willem de Kooning and Carol Apple Ernest Mancobe all them but, but, but like not really like I don't I don't fucking I wouldn't be I, you know I wouldn't be worshipping them because like you know you look at it and go that's brilliant I love that expression but I don't be delving any deep into what they're doing yeah. you know because again none of it none of it ever interested me exactly none of the art history yeah. or any artists that have come gone didn't interest me at all. Fucking no interest. Yeah. Now we've seen that the Pollock, the Pollock movie is unbelievable. You really like that movie. Um, somebody, somebody sent me it because she took a screenshot on Instagram of one of my paintings that reminded her of one of the Jaxi paintings, and then she sent yeah. me a, a link, and it was a, it was a link to his movie, and it was brilliant. I really liked it. Um, but but no, not not really. Just the father, yeah, Shem, and yeah, that's it. Big yeah. Conley, a comedian. Yeah, that's that's about it, really. Yeah. So, so, so speaking of inspiration, there's a painting that inspired this next question. So, w- when I was looking around on Reddit for painted related topics, w- when I have a guest on, I'll just w- once I come up with topics or questions, I'll just throw keywords into Reddit and see what pops up to see if it inspires right. something. And one of the top posts in Reddit when you search for painting is there's this painting of uh, Vladimir Putin in a ballerina outfit. He has a pink tutu on. He has pink ballerina shoes. 
Um, oh, and it's and it's in the old ale ha- the old town ale house in Chicago. It didn't say who painted it. I would shout out the person if it, it said, but it just said this is in the old town ale house in Chicago. Vladimir Putin in a pink tutu and and shoes. And I'll throw this up on the YouTube for yeah. people uh, watching it so they can get an idea. But just visualize. You know, Putin is in like this stretched out ballerina position with his legs crossed and straight and he's up on his toes in pink shoes. So I wanted to ask you as a painter, if someone commissioned you for your next painting and said, I just want you to paint Vladimir Putin, like that's all they give you, like the vibe of Vladimir Putin. How would you go about that painting? Well, I can't say I know much about him now, so I wouldn't... um... He I, likes I nuclear just, weapons. He like he likes yeah, war, he likes invade yeah. his yeah, his favorite hobbies are taking strolls in the park, invading countries and Eating threatening to launch nukes. To yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> his, that's his hinge profile. Long walks yeah. in the park and, and invading countries. Yeah. Uh, so the way I would go about that would be I would just kind of go to where you know, a, a feeling or, or a thought of, I think of, say, you know, I, I would think of anger, say, and, you know, frustration and, you know, all those kind of, say, I won't say, ne- yeah, negative kind of emotions. And I would just, I would start there with colours. A lot of, like, empty, a lot of empty empty areas on the canvas say like with black I would probably leave a lot big big gaps of black um and red cadmium red a lot of darkness and like fear say in colours like you know that's mm-hmm. what I would go that's where I would go if I was painting a lot of, lot of just dark empty big broad spaces of uh it wouldn't be as electric now as what i, I normally would do it would be mm. big big thick broad brush strokes big wide about just wide kind of movements of black and, and red and maybe a bit of gray or that'd be about it it wouldn't be it'd be, it'd be industrial looking copper a lot of that kind of it would be that vibe not a lot of not a lot of energy in it just heavy heavy empty space but with dark colors, yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd be changed. Mm. That'd be the way it would go. Now. <laughs> I might make that. <laughs> would there would oh, there be stuff. any would there be any hope? You know, any like just a small amount of brightness, no. or would it be all completely dark? No, no, no. I mean, none that. I don't. I don't. If, if somebody, if somebody just said to me, Vladimir Putin, I don't. I wouldn't. There's, there's no hope there. Well, not in my in my brain. Anyway. But just yeah. to be honest, Zach, I don't fucking read into it. All, you know. I yeah. know I'm not I'm not I'm not deep in the news game. I don't fucking look at it. So that's just from listening to other people talk about what's going on yeah. there. I don't really know a lot of it because I don't fucking want to know. I I know enough. You know? Yeah. I, w- I will I will more... say uh I, I will say the one political news podcast that I listen to is called Breaking Points with Crystal yeah. and Sager. So, you know, that's my political fix. I don't read political articles when i read it's more it's either fiction or or someone i want to learn about but it's not mainstream politics but my Mm. my my politics cheat show is breaking points so if you're looking for a small dose of politics that's not going to make you put your head through a wall i'll definitely check it out (laughs) They're, they're they're pretty good sounds like there's a few fucking people listening to that around these parts yeah 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 um so this this is this is a question that i'm asking uh for a friend but also for anyone in general who's afraid to put themselves out there creatively so i so i have a friend and maybe he's listening to this podcast i'll say his name it's doug so if you're listening to this doug fucking listen to to kieran's answer and you know take it in so basically yeah, my friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my fr- <laughs> yeah. Uh, th- my friend's Vladimir Putin. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so basically, my friend Doug is is an incredibly talented music artist. He's my age, a little bit younger, 27. He's been making music since he's 19, 20 years old. We went to college together. So 
you know, very talented, plays piano, guitar, good at making beats. He sings and he sent me so many great files that he's never put on SoundCloud or Spotify. He's never released a single song. And he just sent his song to one of the top songwriters in the world. Um, he he th- this guy was holding a live stream his, his he goes by the name of friend frnd the artist's name is andrew goldstein but he's written some mm-hmm. of the top songs in the world and yeah. andrew goldstein pulled up doug's song on a live stream and listened to it live because he'll he'll do a stream where he just takes new artist music and he comments on it and he gives them words of wisdom suggestions and so he played doug's song live and he's listening to it and he's like really into it and he's like damn mm-hmm. like just fucking put this out there this is this is finished <laughs> and he still hasn't released it it that was months ago so i wanted to ask you you know for people for people like Doug and people who just are very talented artistically but can't get over that hump of releasing their art out into the world whether maybe they're afraid or they're anxious or, you know, it's, for some reason there's just this block. What would mm. you say? What would you say to a person like that? Um, I would say make make a video first and don't put it anywhere. Just make make the video and just turn to put the camera on yourself doing whatever it is you do making music or fucking painting or whatever but but have the camera on your face have the camera on your face and um if you're playing music look watch it back and see what you think of it you know and what you think of it will be so fucking stupid you'll be like oh my god that's the state me there that's not you know it's you'll realize how unimportant it is that nobody cares Cameras on your face, but they're listening to your music and they're like, "Oh my god, that music's unreal." Whatever shit you think is wrong with the video, it won't be it won't be the case because you'll have thought with yourself. You know, mm-hmm. you'd be like, Jesus, "That that," because you're watching the video and you're like, "Geez, that sound I sound really good there." But if the camera's on your face, whatever anxieties you have about yourself putting it up there, it, it will be, it will just melt away. It won't matter because you're listening. Jesus, that that sounds unreal. You know, that's what I think anyway. And then I would also say. Fucking, there's something underlying there. If you're afraid to put something out, you have something. There's something in you that you, you need to... You can either work on first before you start or just fucking start. Just start putting it out there in snippets. Put 10 seconds up. Or... Music is a great one because, I, I, again, I've been talking about that lad or he's at that session on Saturday. If you're a musician, you have such... The connection you can get with people about music you can just put up 10 seconds on soundcloud or on an instagram story and get immediate feedback like you know what do you think of this how do you think this is sounding like at the end of the day it doesn't really matter because you know it sounds good or bad or whatever but like you can have that crack online you know live it's it's unreal so powerful and like again if you're good like your friend doug if it's as good as what all these lads are saying then fucking guess what doug the clock is ticking you know if you want if you want to be a musician or, you know, you have some dream or aspiration of playing in a band or just sitting in a fucking club or being part of some ensemble, you know, you're not getting any younger horse. Fucking hurry up. The only way you're going to do it if you're sitting in a fucking box room there in Brooklyn or fucking Manhattan somewhere is by getting that camera on your face. It's the only way. Because that's what I found out. You know, I'm not connected to any gallery or any 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 you know i don't have any mm. you know uh, what's it called the sponsors or nobody i'm getting no help from any of that and you don't fucking need it you know you might get you might get looked at in a different light in the world you're in but so what you're you can create your own path you know you can do it you can do it in the morning you're doing it you know yeah so the quicker you can do it and the quicker you can push it out there the quicker all your fears and anxieties will melt away. Yeah. Because I've got it all, Zach. I've got all the comments and they're fucking hilarious. I use them, like. And it's, it's you know, it doesn't matter, you know. Somebody, you put up a picture of of yourself with a microphone and somebody says, what the fuck is wrong with your hair? Why is your hair so long and greasy? Or if I put up a picture of me holding the painting and they go, what's wrong with your nose? Why is your nose so big? 
you know, the quicker you can get those comments out of the way, the quicker you will be able to get to where you want to be. I'm telling you, that that's what that, that happens. It's happening, like, so that's what I would think. Because that's what a lot of the fear is, that is what people look like or what they sound like or how people might. Mm-hmm. But nobody fucking cares, that Everybody has their own, everybody has their own countdown clock and everyone's worried about their yeah. own shit. They're not going to give a bollocks about what you're worried about. They're not. Yeah. You hear that, Doug? Fucking hurry up, baby. <laughs> line, that, it up line it up and shoot. Line it up and shoot. You better end fucking, it after that. <laughs> shoot that shit out there. See what happens. Yeah. Fire it off. Um, so I want. I, I wanted like to. Yes. So so I want. I wanted to end off on an Irish proverb, and oh, nice. you know, to Americans, Ireland is the land that knows how to drink. They're they're. It's a great country to get drunk in, and one day I yeah. will get shit faced in a pub in Ireland, and perhaps you'll be there. Here? No, I've never been to Ireland. Uh, James, exactly. You must let me know now when you're coming I'm, over. And we'll, we'll I, will, I, 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 I will. I will. I, yeah. I will make my way there. And now I'll show I, you I, fucking. I, I'll show you Ireland, not fucking Dublin, Ireland. I'll show you Ireland now, not Temple Bar, where all you fucking Yanks go to drink Guinness. That's eight euro, I, and it's shite. I, I would lo- I would love to. Oh, no. uh, I yeah. only have t- uh, tomorrow. I have twenty one thousand eight hundred ninety nine days left, so I gotta <laughs> fucking I gotta take your advice and fucking hurry up. Yeah. Um. So there's there's an Irish proverb that I came across that goes like this. It says, "Drink is the curse of the land. It makes you fight with your neighbor. It makes you shoot at your landlord, and it makes you miss him." So. My my question is: Is there a is there a moment? And, and I know you've cut back from drinking, and, and you've had a phase in your life where you were going much harder. Um, but I, I wanted to ask you: You know, since drinking is such a big part of the culture in Ireland, is there a moment where you know you, you think back to? with your friends where you guys are getting drunk at the pub or you're having a good time, like a, a moment that you consistently revisit as one yeah. of your favorite, as one of your favorite times where it was just the right amount and, and the right people yeah. and drinking was involved, like so, something that sticks out to you. Mm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> a lot of it, a lot of it is heavy. Oh God, the memories might not be right, but ah, uh, there's definitely there's a few. My brother's wedding was a big, a big one. Um, we were all there on the on the second day. We were in a little small old man pub there, and it was just magic. Everybody was sitting around, all just my family and Tessa's family, and all our musical cousins were playing a big traditional session, and it was just. It was just magic. Everyone was around. The sun was shining and everyone was just buzzing. And it was a great time, you know, a great celebration of, of you know, two families come together. Uh, that was that was one. But recently, which is like very recent, was New uh, New Year's in mm. the tw- 2019 New Year. So the, the New Year's before COVID. My dad was playing a session in, a, in his local pub, which is very small. It's like... It's it's probably half the size of the room you're sitting in there, Zach. It's a tiny little traditional mm. pub with no TV and a little fireplace with a fire and everybody just goes in there to catch up with each other. There's no phones. There's none of that bullshit in this pub. And uh, my brother was home from Korea. My other brother, Paddy, and we were there. We just went down to drink a couple of pints, you know, for, for New Year's. And we weren't even going to stay for the New Year's. But next thing, a couple of musicians came in and my father was like, just let's go get my instrument. And next thing, a fucking unbelievable musical session broke out. I was nowhere, completely random. And the whole thing was bouncing all night. Every tune got quicker and louder than the next. And like, me and my brother were looking at each other going, oh my God, this is unreal. And uh, and, and when New Year's was, was rang in, uh, Pascal, the lad that owns the pub, he flashed the lights there, did the countdown, and the music stopped. And he, he gave everybody in the pub a drink and everybody cheers each other on New Year's and everybody hugged each other. There was about, I'd say there was about 60 people in the pub. Now, that's not a lot of people, but for this mm. pub, you can't you can't move. It was that that tight. 
and everybody hugged each other. It was unbelievable. I've never felt love like it in her. In it was unbelievable. And to this day, we talk about it. And when I meet Pascal, I say to him, and he remembers it as well because it was the last night of its kind since COVID. Like so, that was that was amazing as well. That night, New Year's, yeah, twenty nineteen. Yeah, that was that. Yeah, dr- <laughs> drinks, drink, drinks or no drinks. That's what it's all about. Moments yeah. like that. Yeah, that's it. Family, music, bit of love. That's all, really. It's Kieran Highland, thank you so much for oh, coming on the podcast. <laughs> that was that was fucking amazing. Um, can oh, you can you there? can you can you please plug everything? And and I'm also gonna put your Instagram website, everything in the oh, intro yeah. as well, so people will hear it. But where can people check out your paintings? Buy them? Follow you? Every everything like that. Uh, it's, yeah, it's basically just just Instagram really Zach uh, I, like, I'm on all the social media I'm not on TikTok but yeah basically just Instagram wherever you are just fucking look for me I'm there here in Highland you'll find me it won't be too hard it won't be too hard to find me my face will pop up anywhere you you, <laughs> you type in my name that's it oh yeah it's, it's at uh, what is it at Kieran Highland on Instagram yeah something like it, that H-Y- L-A-N-D, yeah. That's yeah. right. Yep. And that'll be that'll be linked in the description as well. Again, thank you so yeah, much. Cheers. I'll I'll have to oh, no I'll, we'll, we'll have to have a pint when I come to Ireland in person. Yeah. And, and give again, me, give this was give, yes, give me about yes, a I month. Will. Yeah. Give me a, no, a month and then we'll be we'll set I'm just gonna sh- I'm just gonna show I'm just gonna knock on your door <laughs> and be like, I'm here. Um, yeah, give me no, <laughs> no, but yeah, th- thank you so much again. Th- this has been an absolute fucking blast. And oh, yeah, um, no I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to to continue to watch your watch your progression online. Yeah, same, same, same. Absolutely. Yeah, keep in touch, keep pumping them out. Hey guys, this is a quick reminder to check out Auxoro Premium, the best deal in premium podcasting. On Auxoro Premium, you gain access to bonus episodes, the unlicensed therapy series, the ability to submit topic suggestions for the podcast, exclusive Ask Me Anything episodes, and the entire premium catalog for only five bucks per month. Go to auxoro.supercast.com, that's A-U-X-O-R-O.supercast.com to join the premium gang today.